Fitzpatrick takes the snap, drops back, lobs it back right corner. Decker! He's got it! Touchdown! Eric Decker scores! And the Jets have won it in overtime! This is the Jet Take with Ben Blessington and Kyle Fahey. Welcome back to another episode of the Jet Take. I'm your host, Ben Blessington. Uh, plenty of stuff to talk about, but uh, you know the, the, the real news doesn't start flooding in until uh, next week we have the Combine, and then uh, two weeks after that we have NFL free agency. So we're starting to get into the, the beginning uh, of the, the official offseason process uh, for the New York Jets. Uh, as always, you can follow our show at The Jet Take on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, obviously iTunes, SoundCloud, pretty much any other uh, pod catcher. Uh, and the other big news to talk about is um, Floyd May- I mean, Darrell Revis' uh, boxing match uh, at 2.30 in the morning in Aliquippa, uh, Pennsylvania last week. We'll, we'll talk about that. He, he has been charged with uh, four different uh, charges and uh, was arrested and is now free on bail. So we'll see what happens. And, and it, uh, it is not a coincidence that his trial date was pushed back until after he is due a roster bonus. So we'll talk about his future with this team, uh, which is already in jeopardy before this incident, but might already be uh, sealed. We'll talk about all that and more. Uh, I am joined as always with the lovely Kyle Fahey. Kyle, how you doing, man? Oh, Ben, thank you for that wonderful greeting. I'm doing well. How about you, I said lovely. Oh, yeah. High voice. Just, you know. All right. Kyle, how you doing, man? Um, pretty good. Pretty good. You, you ready? I mean, I, I, I've, I've, it's been a while. It's been a while since our last, you know, show with, with all three of us here. I got my Girl Scout cookies here, some Samoas. I got my laptop, the mic. We're all ready. We're all ready. You're joking. Um, I actually have my cookies right here, too. They're like... <laughs> Congratulations, Kyle. Uh, and we are going to be ending the show at 6, or at least I have to leave at 6.30 uh, my time. So we're either going to end it or if there's a bunch of callers in the line, David and Kyle uh, will continue. And as always, we'd like to thank our producer, who doesn't get a shout out at the beginning, but we're going to do it now, uh, Gangreen David. Uh, we're going to we're going to tweet out his social media. I believe it's at Gangreen David 1 for Twitter and at Gangreen David on uh, YouTube and Instagram. I'll go double check that. Uh, but Kyle, let's go jump into some Jets news. We'll start with the Revis thing because that's pretty much the the big news um, per se surrounding the Jets. Where, where, how, how do you think this impacts his future? Do, do you think do you think his, his fate is sealed that that the Jets aren't going to even look to restructure and and play him possibly as the number two corner free safety? Do you think they're just going to cut bait? Yeah, I think if the Jets were going to cut him, ninety eight percent sure it just got boosted up to a hundred. This is just another sore on the last tail years of Darrell Revis's. NFL career, and uh, you know I don't care what he says about a pay cut. The dude might have to cut a plea bargain pretty soon. We don't know how this is going to pay out, uh, play out. No, yeah, for sure. I, I think Darrell was it was an interesting situation. I was of the mindset that you know obviously this team needs to go young, um, but you know Darrell's always been my favorite player because he was one of the first players on on that initial Jets team that that I fell in love with. So it's like Darrell's always going to have a, a a very close place in my heart. So I was of the mindset that, you know, if you can restructure him and play him as the number two, uh, then do it uh, because he is a Jets legend. But at this point, it just seems like maybe going the younger options are the better, especially when you hear the news that the Jets are going to be targeting um, some high-end free agents. And that just might be, you know, some smoke screens to, to Revis's agents uh, to you know, accompanied with this this altercation that hey, Revis, if you want to come back, you or make some money that that you're gonna to have to restructure. Um, but if the Jets do go to the free agent market, you know, I think Tremaine Johnson's probably the top guy, not not in in skill, but in he has the experience with our current uh, secondary uh, coach. So so there's always uh, that connection. But I personally love AJ Boye. You never really seen him in a number one role. I know he played some of it in Houston, but it's still you know concerning those guys who who played you know half a season. Uh, to a season as a full-time starter, he not not in skill set or anything, but just kind of scenario. It reminds me of the Byron Maxwell situ- uh, situation that happened um, in Seattle. However, um, Houston secondary is a lot worse, and he he did shine. So I think Boye would also be a, a tremendous fit. You could look at Stephon Gilmore. There, there, there's plenty of, of of free agent corners and safeties for that matter. Kyle, who who if if you could only sign one big time free agent, big money I should say, uh, for the Jets uh, this off season, who would it be? So you can only sign one. Um, 
and, and you know keep it somewhat realistic. You know, not obviously. Uh, you know, I, I can't even think of a, an unrealistic option here. But you know, between the Tony Jeffersons and the and the AJ Boyes, and and even if you want to ex- expand out to Alshon Jeffrey, uh, who would be the number one free agent that you you would uh, bring in if the Jets can only sign one? Do they have to be a free agent currently? Uh, it would have to be. They're they're more than likely than not going. Uh, they're they're more likely than not uh, going to be on their team next year. Like they're going to be a free agent next year probably. Uh, I would go. I would go with T-Mobile Tyrod Taylor then. I see what you're saying. So out of out of everybody, you go with Tyrod. Yeah, I think it's the most vital position on the field. And honestly, I think if you get a decent quarterback like Tyrod, who you know statistics really and focus, as I like to put it, I, I I forget who tweeted it out. It was some sort of Jets beat writer, I believe. Uh, the 15 games that Tyrod has been able to play with Sammy Watkins and Robert Woods both available his stats are borderline elite very good player when he has receivers who are above average and you know Sammy Watkins and Robert Woods aren't really that great of a receiving core I would definitely choose Brandon Marshall and Eric Decker over that so I could only imagine what he would do with those weapons well are you kidding me Robert Woods is like a third receiver on any other team Honestly, I'm not. Ta- well, the the only thing with Sammy Watkins is he's constantly injured. He's but constantly if, injured. If, if you're looking at it, I mean, Eric Decker missed this, is coming off a, a full season. I mean, I would I would take the Jets wide receiving core over. I'm just saying. I mean, you're looking yeah. at two thirty plus year old wide receivers uh, and a, and a bunch of unexper- inexperienced receivers. I mean, if, if from Tyrod's perspective, um, as a guy who's not you know obviously closely following the Jets wide receiver uh, situation. So Kyle, if you had to go an- another guy, uh, who would you who would you bring in? Oh, um, probably Tony Jefferson, just because of his versatility in the secondary and his uh, familiarity with Todd Bowles' scheme uh, and what he likes to do. Tony Jefferson is a guy we can bring in for like $8 million a year, which wouldn't be too bad for what he can do. He can come in. He can play both safety positions for you. He's been known to play some corner from time to time. He's a very good tackler, very good in coverage been known to body up some very good tight ends. Uh, did I already mention Blitzing? I don't know. I'm going down my checklist right now. He's just great at so many things. And then when we were previewing for the Arizona game earlier this year, I brought up his name and I listed him as one of my top five safeties in the NFL. And I caught a lot of heat for that. But now since he hit the free agent market, I think a lot of fans are starting to realize how good he is. You know, it's always you got to prove somebody wrong with you, Kyle. I, I, I... Hey, I'm hey, just saying. There are hey, chips on I'm my just shoulder, saying, it seems and I got like every eat week them. There's a. It seems like every week there's a. I was right about this 18 months ago. Well, okay. when people, uh, I do, I do, I will give you props. So I do remember the Tony Jefferson thing. You, you were, you were on Tony Jefferson, like Donkey Kong. Uh, yeah. For me, I, I think I'm looking at at the secondary. <laughs> oh, the sure way you, the way uh, you phrased that was hilarious, honestly. Yes, we're very, we're going monotone uh, today. Yeah. Uh, you look at the secondary. I think that is a place the Jets should target in free agency uh, because uh, that and the offensive line are those are two positions where it's tough to get a guy who's going to come out of the draft day one and just be great. Now, obviously, it happens. There, there are obviously great corners and safeties that come out. I'm talking in, in rounds two uh, to four, the mid round, where I think the Jets should probably target a corner safety. Um, they, they, no, possibly they could go in the first round. I, I like Marshawn Lattimore. I think you can even go oh, yeah. Hooker, who you did not have in your in your mock draft, your first uh, draft. Uh, you did, yep. I mean, Jamal Adams, there are plenty of safeties and corners the Jets could go with. I'm saying if, if they don't go secondary in the first round, uh, rounds two to four is a little dry. I, the, there's plenty of guys who who could be you know good uh, next year and beyond, uh, or sorry, two years from now and beyond. But I think the the the, the amount of guys that come in in mid rounds and just produce is is very small. So I think the Jets should definitely address some of that. You look at guys who are already on the Jets roster: Marcus Gilchrist, Buster Screen, Darrell Revis. Uh, you could even look at Marcus Williams as a guy who who could be gone. I hope they bring back Marcus Williams. He's a young guy. He's a ball hawk. Um, and even Calvin yep. Pryor could be on the trade block. So I think you're going to be looking at a completely different Jets secondary. I think Buster Screen um, is, is going to return, hopefully on a restructured deal to, to free up some money. Uh, but they did that last year, and they just pushed his money further down the line. So I think the Jets are going to stop kicking the can on Buster Screen and just plan this year on his salary. 
Um, but but you really saw the difference in in, in the slot buster screen versus the outside uh, buster screen. In, in the slot buster screen is, is, is a tremendous corner. He, he is he is uh, fantastic against uh, the, the slants, the drags, the over the middle, the posts. But when when he has to, to to play the sideline, that's where he gives up a lot of big plays, and you saw that this year. So I think the Jets should look to bring in either uh, one corner and start Darrell Revis. Uh, it, let's on a restructured deal uh, as as the number two. Maybe maybe if you believe in Justin Burris, start him as the number two. But I don't think in any circumstance should Buster Screen be playing outside this year because he, we prove that that Daryl Roberts, Marcus Williams, uh, etc., are better than him on the outside. But I think Buster Screen has value in the slot. So I think the Jets need to at least bring in one big time corner, possibly two. So you could be looking at the Jets bringing in AJ Boye uh, and and. Uh, another guy, maybe maybe Tremaine Johnson, uh, maybe a, a second-tier free agent corner. Uh, so you're going to see a lot of turnover there. As far as the safeties go, Tony Jefferson is a guy I would like to see the Jets pursue. I think he has uh, that, that experience in Todd Bowles' system. He has a lot of versatility. The thing that the Jets haven't had in a long time is a true free safety. In 2015, Marcus Gilchrist delivered some of that, but but in years past, I mean, you can go back to LaRon Landry and De- DeJuan oh, Landry yeah. and Brodney Poole and, and even Calvin Pryor. Yeah, it seems like when the Jets have a, a mediocre, solid safety, it's always a strong safety, or we're starting two strong safeties. Uh, so, so I think the the Jets need to either. Um uh, sorry, excuse me. I think I think Tony Jefferson, although he does play the box quite well, actually does have some coverage skills to go along with it. He's definitely an upgrade over Marcus Gilchrist. Um, and I think uh, if if you're cutting Marcus Gilchrist and and, and you restructure or uh, excuse me, if if you cut Marcus Gilchrist and you cut Darrell Revis, uh, Tony Jefferson is not going to take. I think he'll probably take about half of that money you're going to free up. Uh, so I think he could be a good investment to make. Uh, for the Jets. And, and Kyle, I, I have a question that was posed to me uh, that uh, a while ago on Twitter, uh, and it was basically this. Do you think Calvin Pryor could, and this is a bit of a 180 on what we were originally talking about. We'll, we'll go back to the free agent market in a second. But do you think Calvin Pryor could make a transition to a linebacker-type no. spot? Now, although that sounds crazy because he's light and he's small, um, he does play the box fairly well. And we've seen guys like Shaq Thompson and Dion Buchanan make it in the past. Um, so do you think that if he puts on some weight and muscle this offseason on the Todd Bowles diet, uh, do you think he could make a transition to a outside linebacker, kind of spider monkey, uh, just roll around uh, middle linebacker safety hybrid? That was, that was a lot of adjectives. But uh, I, I personally, yeah. I think that, that it could be in, 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 in the future for, the, for Calvin Pryor if he doesn't improve his coverage skills. But uh, go ahead and give your take. Uh, I'm going to say no on this one. Um, you know, just a little too small for me, honestly. Uh, 5'11", 207, uh, known as the big header, but, you know, when it's a big header coming across at the tight end in the middle of the field, and, you know, his coverage skills aren't that great, so I, I don't really see it there. I feel like we, we're kicking the cam with, as you said earlier, with uh, Calvin Pryor at this point. I think we should just get the most from him right now before he's gone next year. Well, I was saying it on Buster Screen. So you're saying the Jets should should look to to trade Calvin Pryor? Yeah, because I I doubt that the Jets will pick up his fifth year option. Why? And, uh, I mean, I mean, I know he's been inconsistent, but he's had his moments. And I, and I know uh, our, our our first caller of the night, who will be on in in, in a few minutes, isn't isn't Calvin Pryor's biggest fan. But but let's be honest. In 2015, he flashed. He was he was a difference maker. Uh, he he is great inside the box. The problem is is his coverage is bad, and when he misses, and he tends to go for the big hit instead of the safe tackle. He, so he's not necessarily a, a great tackler, um, but he plays the box well, and he's a huge hitter. And and when he lays down the boom on somebody and forces a fumble or or even just a big hit in general, it does change the the feel of the game. So you have to give him that. He's talented and he's young. So so why don't you think the Jets should pick up the fifth year option? Because it, it's it's not going to be too expensive. More or more so what he's making as a, as a as a first round draft pick. Um, it shouldn't be too much of a difference. So why wouldn't the Jets take another year to to evaluate him and then either let him go or bring him back? I think you said it yourself. I mean, when you look at safeties, what you want to get out of them is good coverage and solid tackling, just in case somebody gets to that second and third level, and I think he's proven to me throughout the three years and now going into his fourth that he can't consistently do that. Now, 2015 was a good year for him. We saw improvement. It was leaps and bounds better than his rookie year in 2014, but he regressed in 2016 tremendously. Now, the whole secondary did, but I I think that... 
So I think I, that I, it was always a reach in the first round anyway. A lot of people had him as a second round talent, and he was well, still developing. Yeah. Yeah, well, the Jets could have gotten Ha Ha Clinton Dix, which which we, most Jets fans or all Jets fans, I should say, would rather take because he's one of the top free safeties, which is what yeah. the Jets needed <laughs> in the safety position. But couldn't you attribute some of that uh, decrease, and obviously to to the to the decrease in production from um, Revis and Screen and Gilchrist, but also, I mean, it seems like Bulls was playing him coverage a little bit more than he was comfortable with. Um, uh, couldn't you attribute some of that? And and just to follow up. So you wouldn't even if you're. What's the point of getting rid of him though, Kyle? Like without even trying a linebacker type experiment. Now I'm not even saying the Jets should. I'm just saying if next year, I don't think the Jets should do it this year, uh, unless Todd Bowles already has made up his mind. But if next year Calvin Pryor just can't get the coverage down, why wouldn't you try him at linebacker? Uh, and if that doesn't work, then you let him go. It just seems like the Jets have brought in a young and obviously talented player. It just seems like they haven't been well, able to mold him into what they they necessarily want. Talented, I mean, he, he does a couple of things really well, but he's, he's not a complete player in any way, shape, or mind. And you look at this draft, GMs are salivating at the talent that you can salivating. find. Salivating? <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I'm kind of eating a cookie while I'm saying this. <laughs> uh, you can get a player in the fourth or fifth round who can come in and make an immediate impact for you. And I think that if you're able to pick up another pick, uh, you know, possibly even package Calvin Pryor with a guy like Sheldon Richardson, I don't know, maybe get a higher pick. There's just you can get a player who can come and make a better impact in my mind in the fourth round than what Calvin Pryor has been making for the Jets. Well, yeah, and the other thing, if you're going to talk about safeties, uh, is Rontez Miles, who's a guy who's not yep. been utilized uh, as well at all. And, yeah, I, I mean, but again, this goes back to to the dearth of free safeties the Jets have and the abundance of strong safeties the Jets have. Is, is Rontez Miles is not a, is another guy who's who's not particularly great in, in coverage, but is good like Calvin Pryor in the box. Uh, you, 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 I think it was. Uh, I'm trying to to find who it was exactly. I don't necessarily have the source, uh, but it, he was ranked the fourth. Uh, best uh, minimum of 200 snaps. Uh, he was ranked the fourth best uh, safety against the run. Uh, so I think it, it, he's one of those guys that if the Jets can get him on the field more, maybe he can be better than than Calvin Pryor. So the, the trade Calvin Pryor argument, although I'm I'm against it now, uh, you could be ahead of the curve here. It, 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 that that Rontez Miles might arguably be the better safety. Um, well, let, let's, let's go back. Is. I think he's outperformed Calvin Pryor, and you look at the things Calvin Pryor does well and Rontez Miles does well, they're very similar players. Rontez Miles, I think, even statistically has been better for him. I know he hasn't played as many snaps, but when you get a first-round pick who's playing on the level of a guy like Rontez Miles who was what? Was he an undrafted free agent, Rontez Miles? Somebody give me that. I don't know when he was picked. I know he popped up on the practice squad like two or three years ago. So I would imagine he wasn't above the fifth round. I believe he was an undrafted free agent. Uh, and when he comes in and outperforms your first-round pick from three going on four years, I think it, it may be a sign that he deserves more reps. Or maybe even the starting job. But that's just my take on it. Ben, thoughts? Yeah, sorry, I'm here. I, I had to... People were making noise. I had to go and, and tell them. So I missed. I missed the end of what you just said. Um, we're talking about. Roger yeah, I, yeah. I said that um, when you look at Calvin Pryor, a guy who was picked in the first round, and a guy Ron Des Miles who was undrafted free agent. Am I wrong? Well, yeah, where he was, was he? he was an undrafted free yeah. agent. Um, okay. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I, I know where you're going here with now. Uh, yeah, I, I think Rontez Miles, who he, he, definitely the value the Jets got was, <laughs> you know, tremendous. I, I argue. Yeah, exponentially better. And you have to look at his impact on special teams. He's a guy that the Jets need to bring back. Um, uh, his, his impact on special teams, and when he's on defense, he does make a lot of big plays. So I think the Jets could look to move Calvin Pryor. They could also look to move him more in the Dion Buchanan role. Um, they could look to to maybe. Um, try one of them out on free safety, although that didn't work in 2014. But, I mean, those two young in-the-box safeties, who knows? Maybe Rontez Miles can work on his coverage game. But uh, I think Rontez Miles is a guy the Jets have to bring back. He's a homegrown, undrafted free agent. Bring him back. Let him continue to shine in the special teams and possibly get that starting role if, if the Jets do decide to dump Calvin Pryor. And I, th I think the Jets have to have a short leaf leash with Pryor because when he's on, he's tremendous, but when he's off, he really hurts the team. You can look at that Kansas City game. You can look at uh, numerous games where 
the tight end is just getting open. Uh, slot receivers are getting open. He's getting burnt deep. He's, he's not giving the, the, the corners help. So he's a guy that the Jets uh, need to monitor this year. Uh, but I do think he still has some talent. Uh, and who knows? Maybe, maybe you know, it, it, Todd Bowles is a part of the transition for Buchanan uh, to – to linebacker, uh, he, he helped to make that transition, so he was there for that. He could do the same with Calvin Pryor. But the big thing with Calvin is he's he's a smaller guy, but I mean he's he's uh, around Darren Lee's size. So, but if if, well, if if Calvin could put on the weight, then I think he can make that transition. Well, Kyle, before, but we we can continue to talk, yeah continue to talk about this. Sorry, I sneezed. Let me get um, well, let me get one more thing in before we bring on the caller. Uh, bring the whole linebacker thing back into focus. Like, my ideal, like, spider monkey type of guy in this draft class, what, I'll just... I love how I just coined that phrase, because that's not a, an analytical phrase. No, that's... We were, we were talking about Darren Lee, like... That's definitely been used. Yeah, by oh, me, okay. <laughs> on our, like, third show, because uh, we were talking John about Gruden. Darren Lee. John Gruden. No, it's spider 2 Y banana. Mm-hmm. Everybody's He's... least favorite commentator. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually hate him, <laughs> but, um... My my ideal spider monkey for this draft would be Raquan McMillan, and you look at his size. <laughs> you're googling it right now. Um, he's like no, six. No, I'm foot. not. I was trying to get a Samoa. Uh, <laughs> even worse. Uh, he's like six foot two, two forty three. I think at his last official land, and he's not even twenty one years old yet, and he's he's still growing. You know, he can still gain weight. That would be my ideal size for a guy like that. And you look at Calvin Pryor, who I want to say is 5'11". Yeah, 5'11", 207 pounds. Now the weight, I guess he can put on 30 pounds, but at Calvin Pryor's age, he's probably not growing like three inches. So I, I don't know how well that transition will be. I know the comparison to Deron Lee, but he's considered an undersized linebacker himself, and we'll see how he turns out. But watch out for Reckon McMillan in the second or third round. I think Todd Bowles could definitely uh, use him. And yeah, well, we'll Kyle, just uh, let's ask this straight up. If, if Tim Williams, the linebacker from Alabama, falls to the Jets in the second round, which could be a possibility, you see guys yep. that fall or that are that are valued as a first rounder that falls in the second, uh, especially since the Jets have a high for a uh, second round draft pick. Would you take him uh, over uh, Raquan uh, McMillan, or would you take Tim Williams? Oh, I would take Tim Williams. It's a bigger need. I see Raquan McMillan being a later second-round pick. I think he's going to have a really good combine, which may completely change that. But, um, you know, talent-wise, I think he's later second round, early third round, just just because it's kind of like a Jabril Peppers situation. A lot of teams don't know how to grade him. Grading systems for them may be different from inside linebackers to strong safeties or even free safeties because he's been known to play them all. Um, so I uh, – I'd rather take Tim Williams, a guy who's a bigger need, and in my mind, a first-round talent, but the off-the-field concerns with, I believe he failed a drug test, which is why he has been, you know, plummeting yeah. down draft stocks right now, and that's not a good sign, you know, failing a drug test. Alabama, usually pretty good um, for that. They usually don't have many players that are in that type of trouble. You know, Nick Saban, good coach, usually keeps his guys in line, but obviously Tim Williams a little bit of an outlier here. So that's a little bit concerning. Uh, but, yeah, I would definitely take Tim Williams. And, you know, in the second round, I, I may not be against trading back into the first round. Maybe you have Sheldon Richardson in our second round pick. You know, one of those late first round picks, pick up another guy who's a first round talent. That would be my ideal plan. No, yeah, I, I think I, the Jets will have plenty of options in, the, in these first two rounds. And, and the second round is a, is a round the Jets have missed pretty much for the last 10 years. Yeah. And it's really so let's important. just get rid of it. <laughs> well, no, I mean, but you, that's, if you want a team to, to, to be, um, to have a bad core and basically not, not have good depths and bad special teams, the, the way you do it is you don't draft well in the second round. You mean you can look at every single second round pick. They went for the big name, the skill, um, and, and they, they ignored the, the trenches and the offensive line and, and, and you know, corners and, and whatnot. And instead they were going quarterbacks, they were going star wide receivers that, the, the, the and tight ends and stuff. The Jets, um, they need to hit on the second round this year. So I think, I, I mean, I love Jabril Peppers. Um, if he falls to the second round, which some are saying he might, even though that sounds crazy because he was projected as a He'll get picked by the Pats. The Pats I could see that. Down. I could see that. Um, but, I mean, he he's a guy that, again, kind of like the Rontez Miles, Calvin Pryor doesn't really fit the Jets' needs, so I wouldn't take him. Uh, I think the Jets just needed to address some needs. I know, I know Max's strategy is the, the best player available, but the Jets need to find the best player available for the Jets. 
Um, so I think that's where we stand. We're, we're going to keep talking about this, uh, the second and third le levels of the Jets' defense, as long, uh, along with the rest of the team. But we're going to go ahead and bring on our first caller of the night, and this is Kyle from AFC East Bros. He runs a tremendous podcast. Kyle Smith, how you doing, man? Gentlemen, what's going on? We're having, we're having a good time. It's been a while. We're, we're all back uh, talking some Jets football. We finally got some draft stuff to talk about. It's starting to heat up. The, the NFL season, off season is, is coming by now. Yeah, man. Uh, certainly a dead time of the year, but shoot, even in these dead times, we find our ways to get ourselves into these debates and stuff. And I'm enjoying listening to you guys. And one of the things I enjoyed is how Faye, he always likes to give himself a pat on the back when he is yeah. smart and when he is oh, right. Yeah. And, Fahey, you know, I want to do the same thing. I want to give you a pat on the back for something that you were spot on a couple of years ago in the draft when you said that Gary, Garrett Grayson would be the was going team. to be a Pro Bowl quarterback. Oh, yeah. So let's all give Fahey a round still of applause. Have to, and and he, was the next, he was the next, what did you say, he was the next Peyton Manning? Yeah. I remember that. I was on the line for that. I saw, that a, lot the, of Peyton, I saw, oh, I saw a lot of Peyton Manning in him. Oh, hey, he's been the backup to Drew Brees for the past two years now, so you never know. You know, I really didn't want to call. Oh, sorry, you go. Go ahead, guys. Sorry. Um, the Calvin Pryor stuff, maybe I want to weigh in on. Last time I called into your guys' show, Ben, you weren't here, but it was David. who David, David has a love affair with Calvin Pryor. And me and Fahey kind of had to talk him back into reality with Calvin Pryor. So maybe we'll go into that a little bit later if, if time permits. But, you know, I'm hearing you guys talk, and I'm hearing you know, some of our other, I would say, knowledgeable Jets fans, such as Alex, Mr. Rufio, who calls into your show occasionally, calls into Let's Talk Jets, calls into my show, calls into Jet Nation Radio. I would consider him a knowledgeable Jets fan. And I've seen all these Jets fans, they want to spend big money on Tony Jefferson and A.J. Boye, and let's sign Tremaine Johnson and A.J. Boye, two big-name quarterbacks that probably both could get more than what Janoris Jenkins got on the open market last year. But, guys, we got the least amount of cap space in the league, and don't, don't be one of those ignorant fans that thinks the cap is just a bunch of BS because it's not. You cannot ever cross it, not once. And, you know, this whole spending spree that some of these fans want to go on, it kind of reminds me of, and I haven't touched this, I haven't sipped alcohol since 2009. Thank God, and I'm never going back to those days. But back in the day, when I used to do it with some friends, you know, I had this one friend, he would get, you know, just piss poor drunk one night. And he would just feel like crap the next morning and be like, I'm never drinking again. I'm never drinking again. Because he knows how bad it felt. Lies. He knows the problems that it brought to him. <laughs> but then again, a couple weekends in the road, down in the future, he's doing it again. He's making the same mistake all over again. And I'm, guys, haven't we seen from repeated organizations that win in, year out, year in, year out, the Baltimore Ravens, the Green Bay Packers, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the New England Patriots, these are teams that are always in the playoffs. When do they ever spend big in free agency? But the Jets always spend big in free agency, but we want to keep making the same mistakes over and over again. And, gentlemen, let me remind you that I'm a history teacher, and most history huh. teachers would say that the reason why we teach history, one of the reasons why we teach history, is so we can learn from mistakes from the past so that we yeah. don't make them again. Wow. Well, I'll go ahead first here because the last time I hosted the show, I think it was two, two, three weeks ago, uh, I had the same sentiment. We, we were talking with Jay, uh, and a lot of you know fans want to bring in, okay, let's bring in Tyrod Taylor. Um, let, let's go ahead and bring in Alshon Jeffrey and Tony Jefferson. I mean, it's like I agree that the cap issue does not is not the bigger reason the Jets should not do this, if that makes sense, because, I mean, look, the Jets are going to free up some cap. Uh, Darrell Revis. Marcus Gilchrist, Buster Screen, Brandon Marshall, possibly you know Eric Decker, Nick Man. I mean, there's 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 ways for the Jets to free up a lot of money if they're cutting a lot of these these veterans. I don't think they should cut everybody because you're gonna have to replace them. But when you look at the wide receiver position and and, and Nick Mangold and even David Harris to an extent, there are guys the, the the Jets will have enough money. My thing is is the Jets need to obviously rebuild. The, that 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 has been my point that you never see. You know the the you know, Pittsburgh Steelers or the, or the New England Patriots, Green Bay Packers go on the huge spending sprees. I do think it is a balance, though. You can't take the idzik approach of just not picking up anybody in free agency and then doing it all through the draft, especially when you're drafting poorly. The Jets need to obviously draft well, and that's you know that's just something you could say. But the Jets actually have to go out and do it. Uh, and, and then as far as free agency goes, I think they should look to target 
They shouldn't be spending big money on the Adrian Petersons, the guys who are over 30 who are going to make big bucks. Look for the guys in their 20s. That's the only reason I'm open to bringing in a Tremaine Johnson or an A.J. Boye, uh, even though they're going to make a lot of money. Uh, I'm not saying the Jets should, but I, I, I wouldn't be against it because if the Jets are going to bring in free agents, they better be young guys who can contribute. Or they could bring in a lot of just second and third tier guys and try to fill some holes, try to rebuild the depth of the roster, and then go draft your stars um, for, for the roster. So I think that the, the latter is probably what the Jets are going to do this free agency. They're going to free up a good amount of money, middle of the league, attack a lot of young, second, third tier free agents, you know, the, the guys who get picked up on day three, four free agency. They're going to attack a lot of that. They're going to fill a lot of the holes on this team um, to, to, to the point where they're not drafting to fill all these holes. Um, but now they, then now they can draft to be like, okay, we don't love our safeties, although we can play with them. Let's go draft, you know, Jamal Adams or Willie Cook or whoever. So I think that's the strategy the Jets should take. Um, I think it's a balance, Kyle. I, I, I and Fahey, we'll, we'll let you, you know, chime in here because you're a guy who's, who's, who seems to be big on the free agents. And, you know, you, you, there's always the sentiment of, well, you know, you don't want to spend big in free agency. You want to draft homegrown players. You don't want to spend big money, and and that is true. However, I I'm I'm in uh, I'm in the middle of that. I I don't think the Jets should repeat the mistakes they made in 2008 and 2010 and and and, and 2015 even. All all these times where the Jets are going out and buy you know buying you know uh, Ladanian Tomlinsons and and Brandon Marshall yeah. and all that stuff. The Jets, although it's exciting and, and the Jets might be good for a year, it doesn't lead to sustainable success. The Jets need to build up the youth of this team, give the guys some reps, and then two three years from now the Jets can be really good. Um, but I don't think the Jets obviously as I said should just ignore it. The Jets need to attack. Fill the roster and then go and draft. Um, but so the Jets should definitely attack in free agency and maybe go after Tremaine Johnson, AJ Boye. Um, but stay away from the from the the top top tier guys, the older guys who are going to command a lot of money. Uh, they, ben, will, they are top tier guys. Well, no, no, I know, I know Boye is. The, I know Boye and Tremaine Johnson. The only reason you you notice, I'm only recommending uh, top tier guys for the secondary because. One, all the guys that I've mentioned are young players, um, and two, the secondary is so horrible that, you know, that's one of those times where I'd be like, you know what, the Jets can go plug an A.J. Boye here. But for the most part, when you're looking at offensive line and, and the rest of the offense and the linebackers and stuff, the Jets should pretty much just target second and third tier young guys. Uh, uh, Pay, do yeah. you want to respond? I mean, you are a co-host. Yeah, well, I wasn't sure whose turn it was. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't really call it plugging it in if you're going to sign players who are, like, under 27 years old and could be franchise players for the next five years. Well, Kyle, I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying – when I say 27, 26, 25, I'm saying guys who have, you know, smaller roles on teams and then you bring them in and then they, they can become uh, great on your team. You look at a guy like Ryan Griffin – who is the, the second string tight end on, on Houston behind C.J. Fedorowicz. He's a very talented guy who, who when given the chance, has been good. Uh, Deion Sims for Miami Dolphin. I, I read an article about the Jets tight end. That's what I was going to bring up. Tight end. Guys, guys like that. I know, I know you don't like Deion Sims. I'm saying guys like young, um, you know, not, not amazing players, not top-end players for their team, but they, they come to the Jets, and then they can blossom into it. I'm, mention, I'm talking about those guys. When it comes to corners, uh, because the corners, oh, uh, when it comes yeah, when it comes to corners, uh, I think the Jets can maybe spend uh, some money, but I, I don't think uh, I don't think the Jets should. But if, but if, if if AJ Boye is in the lurking, if I'm Mike McCagnan, I might throw a few more million at him. No, no, ben, you're reminding Ky- me. No, oh, sorry, sorry, Kyle. Sorry. No, no, you, you no, go. You, you're, you're, hey, you're about to say you're though. reminding me of. So uh, I'm very curious. You're reminding me. You're reminding me of a politician right now, and this is, you know, really before you were if it, if it's of age Trump, to really I... know. No, 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 not Trump. <laughs> okay, okay, but, okay. Uh, that, that's Kyle. Bush that's Kyle Fahey. That's, that's Fahey over there. Bush Sr. in the 90s. I was he right said, six years ago when I... <laughs> Sorry. Go you ahead. just got compared to Bush Sr. That's even worse. Hey. He once funny. said, read my lips, no new taxes. And then what the hell did he do? He raised the taxes. You're reminding me of that right now. You're telling me, oh, the Jets shouldn't go out and spend big in the first couple of days. They should wait to the second, third wave of free agency. But then you're saying in your next sentence, they should sign Boye and they should sign Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, I know I'm contradicting myself. I know I'm contradicting myself. Let's, let's take m- my Boye and Tremaine Johnson comments away. Although I do think bringing in Tremaine Johnson should be Can the extent... That? Is that a thing? Can we just say we're taking them away and then have them no. not okay. count? I'm just, I'm just saying. Let's, let's take that argument away. For the most part... 
I think the Jets should target the Ryan Griffins, the, the guys who are backups or, or mid-level players, and bring them onto the Jets. My point was that the Jets have so many holes on the secondary um, and just a lack of talent, and they were so bad, and it cost them in plenty of games, that if an A.J. Boyer or Tremaine Johnson was available and it wasn't absurd, then I think the Jets should entertain it. But I, I, for the most part, 95% of what I'm saying is don't go after the Alshon Jeffries, the Le'Veon Bells, the Adrian Petersons, all those guys that are going to uh, – Le'Veon Bells not in the open market. But all those guys that are going to hit the open market, even Tyrod Taylor to an extent, stay away, you know, sign the Nick Foles, sign the – just, just – I know it's boring. No, and it's not going to excite the. No, I know it's not going to excite the no, franchise. But you, no, you sign the mid-level guys, no, and then you go and build on it in the draft. Hope that Hackenberg's your guy. Go draft Kaiser or Watson. I'm just Mahomes. Even I'm just saying, I don't think Tyrod Taylor. You said it like Mahomes was the last option over Kaiser. I I hey I I have my own things with Mahomes. I think he's very talented, but for the I don't think he'd be great in the Jets. <laughs> Kaiser's system. Um, Kaiser's the best quarterback in this draft class, and, and I, I will I will and, fight for death for him. And we're muting Ben for the night just for that ice cold take. Uh, you said Nick Foles, and I lost all respect for you, Ben. Kyle, do you do you think the Jets are going to go to the playoffs and win a Super Bowl next year? Uh no. So why why should the Jets? I don't think we will the next five or six years, possibly why, eight. Why shouldn't the Jets bring it? When you have Christian Hackenberg and Bryce Petty on the bench, two not very talented guys, but who are young in question marks, especially Christian Hackenberg, why would you go sign a guy like Tyrod Taylor and then and once you, after you draft a Christian Hackenberg, I'm not, well, this, this is going to come out like, whoa, whoa, don't bring in Tyrod because of Christian Hackenberg. I'm saying the Jets should bring in a veteran, a Mike Glennon, a Nick Foles, the boring guys that I will not want to root for on Sunday, and then hopefully, hopefully Christian Hackenberg or Bryce Petty can beat him out. But the Jets aren't contending next year. Maybe they can go on a Cinderella run, but let's build up the rest of the roster. Now, Kyle Smith, I want to ask you a question. A guy who really the intrigues Jets can me. can definitely compete le- next year with a quarterback. Just saying. With the, well, Kyle, I think there's a lot of different holes in this team. When you look at the offensive line, you, they're running Matt Forte's aging unless, unless they try to get rid Both of him. Both had over 1,000 yards uh, all-purpose last year. I don't know. I'm giving just saying. Matt Forte's hitting 31. Uh, we're, you know, we we might enter still, next season with some inexperienced still, wide receivers. We have no tight ends. Our offensive line is pretty terrible. Our defensive line wasn't applying any pressure even though they're – what what do you say? Uh, the, even the defense. We all line, know we all know Fahey loves bowls too. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. There's a lot of there's a lot of uncertainties on this Jets team. Kyle Smith, I wanted to ask you. Um, I, we kind of jumped away from the topic when we were initially talking. You know, if the Jets could sign one, you know, free agent, who would it be? Uh, my guy for the Jets that I never got to say. If it let me let me rephrase this. It was the big money. So we were we were ignoring the the realistic like. Well, okay, basically we're saying if you could only sign one big money, Kyle said Tyrod Taylor, my guy would be Melvin Ingram. Uh, I, I know now you're just, he's contradicting himself, but I don't think the Jets will sign him. I'm just saying as far as, as need goes and big money goes, that he fits all, all, all the boxes. However, he's going to make a boatload, and I don't think the Jets would attack that. But would you be opposed to bringing in Melvin Ingram? Because, he, I mean, he does fit pretty much everything the Jets – have needs wise, and I, I don't mean to say anything, but I mocked him to the. Uh, I'm pulling Kyle Fahey. I mocked him to the Jets in that 2012 draft over and over and over again, and then the Jets took Quentin Copel. So it's it's whatever. I believe I believe that's the correct draft. I, I might be mistaken there, but I believe it was the Quentin. It is. Draft. It is. Yeah, it was. Copel's went 16. Ingram went 18. Uh, just. Uh, we, we had him. We had Melvin Ingram. He fell right into our laps, and we took Quentin Copel. Anyways, would you be opposed to bringing in Melvin Ingram? Yes, I would, because Melvin Ingram, you know, he's had a long history of injuries throughout his career, uh, torn ACLs included in there. He's 28. Um, while he's explosive right now, we don't know how long that's going to last. You know, once he hits 30, 31, 32 years old, he's going to have that same level of explosion. That's the, and it's going to be two, three years before the Jets should even be competitive. I think both of you would probably agree with that. So, no, I, I, do, love, I do love his game. But it's just not a move that the Jets should be making. Now, I will say this, and this I don't think is contradicting myself, because I would say that quarterback is an exception to the rule. And I think you guys can probably agree on some level with that, in the sense that quarterbacks never hit free agency. Potential franchise quarterbacks 
never hit free agency. That's why you see guys like Romo get crazy deals. Guys like Cutler get crazy deals. Guys like Flacco get the highest contract in the league at the time Flacco's when he signed a league. new deal. Uh, he's not a lead, but the point I is, know. his quarterback is just too damn valuable that teams are willing to do whatever it takes to re-sign a guy. Now, I think all of us would kind of agree that the Buffalo Bills haven't made the playoffs in 17 years. That's a stupid organization. And oh, yeah. I think all of us would agree that if they let go of Tyrod Taylor, even though he's only like the 20th highest paid quarterback in the league, that is a stupid, idiotic move. Now, if he shakes free in free agency, we saw what he could do over the past two years. We, we know he has flaws. We know that he's not elite. But he is a potential future franchise quarterback that he still has room to develop. I would say that he's an exception. And when we look at how long quarterbacks can last, they can play into their late 40s, especially with the way science is moving. I mean, Brady, you should hear what he had to say on Peter King's podcast about like how he, you know, he does uh, muscle pliability and stuff and how he believes that he can play till 45 and things like that. And how he says that it would be very hard for him to get a certain injury because of the way that he trains his body. It's not unrealistic to think that Tyrod Taylor could be a good quarterback for seven, eight more years in this league, whereas someone like Stephon Gilmore, Tremaine Johnson, they might only have three years left of high-level play. So I would say that Tyrod Taylor, a quarterback, is the only exception, and quarterback is by far the highest-paid position so, or, or the highest valuable position. So that would be the only big money free agent that I would sign. Thank you, your take. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, Kyle, you said the Jets wouldn't be competitive, you know, for a couple of years. I don't think we would win the division, but I think if if we had Tyrod Taylor and, you know, possibly drafted Marshawn Lattimore to be our number one corner and sign Tony Jefferson, I think the defense would be significantly better than it is now and the offense would be ten times better than it is now. And even if, say, Brandon Marshall gets cut, we keep Eric Decker, we still do have guys like Quincy Nunwa and Robbie Anderson who are pretty young and still, I guess, developing some sort of way. I think Robbie Anderson would be the only one really still developing his game. But I think the Jets could definitely be competitive and be definitely vying for a wild card every year. You know, you know, Muhammad Wilkerson being injured last year definitely hurt the defensive line. We had some really young guys on uh, – in the linebacking core last year, Jerron Lee, Jordan Jenkins. Hell, even Lorenzo Molden is still developing, and you hope with the addition of Kevin Green to the coaching staff, who has been known in his years in the Green Bay Packers to develop young players to be good superstars. It's, for example, Clay Matthews, who has been a superstar at two different positions, middle linebacker and yeah, outside okay. linebacker. Kyle, I'm going to cut you off here for a second. You're, you're being a little delusional here. I'm not saying that it's not possible for the Jets to contend for a wild card spot, but you're making it sound like, oh, well, yeah, he'll develop into that and do this. You realize Clay Matthews was, was a top pick coming out of USC. I mean, a lot of people knew he was going to be a good linebacker. You know, you look at Jordan Jenkins. He was solid against, you know, the run, and he had some, some you know, nice stuff, but he, he's obviously not in, in it. Uh, he's never going to be a superstar uh, outside linebacker. Darren Lee is a bit undersized, but I think he has some potential. But let's be honest, his rookie year was up and down. Before he was injured, he was doing pretty well. He led the team in tackles. After he injured, he struggled in, in pass coverage. Um, you, you look around this team, there's a lot of holes, Kyle. And, and I don't think... Uh, now, would I love to see your Tyrod Taylor in a Jets uniform? Yes. But and, and does, the, does the fan of me want to say, okay, go go free up a bunch of cap space, go sign AJ Boye, go sign Melvin Ingram, to Tyrod Taylor? Yes. But I know that if if the Jets want to be a consistently good team, always in the playoffs, contending for the division, they have to hold back this this instinct. Go bring in the, the, these young players, fill your roster, and then go after your Tyrod Taylor. Then go after your you know Alshon Jeffrey. Your Melvin Ingram, your AJ Boyd, then they should do that. I but think the Jets have to stay. To. The Jets have to just. And their free agent strategy should be um, mid-level players that are young. Then they should be trading, try to trade guys. Maybe they can get something for Brandon Marshall or or Matt Forte, for instance. Even if it's the seventh round pick, you just see what you can get for certain players. Even Calvin Pryor, as we mentioned, and start Rontez Miles. Acquire as many picks as you can, and then I trust Mike McCagnan because he's made some good picks. Uh, at least at a, at a higher percentage than Idzik was hitting at. Um, his second round picks hasn't been. That hasn't been saying much. Obviously, yes, but but at least in, in <laughs> past regimes, um, McCagnan's been at least a solid drafter. Get as many picks as you can. Get the ten. Get ten picks. Basically, redo your Idzik twelve, except it's the McCagnan ten or whatnot, and and go ahead and draft the future of your team. 
and then two, three years from now, the Jets can be a, a competitor. Because we don't know what Christian Hackenberg is, and to an extent, we don't really know what Bryce Petty is. Except I, 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 I think we much both know, Bryce know what they are. We both know pretty much what Bryce Petty is. However, it's not unheard of for him to come out and have a much better year next year and build on it. However, Christian Ackenberg is, is still an unknown. Uh, Kyle, we're going to let you go soon here, but, but one last question for you. I want to talk about the Darrell Riva situation. Um, how do you think he, this impacts his future with the team? Or, or do you think he's gone? I think Connor Hughes was pretty much spot on when he did a, a little short, quick video about the situation. He said, listen, the Jets probably made up their mind about Darrell Revis already. Um, he would say, I would, I would probably say this 95% chance that he wasn't back with the team, and how could this affect it? Maybe it affects it one Maybe there's a 96% chance that he's not back with the team now. Um, there's still so much to, to figure out and dive into it. Like, that just not, and Ben, you said it at the top of the show. I mean, the whole hearing has been pushed back. All, teams always need to get more information before they can make big conclusions about this. But regardless, this should strictly be based. This decision should be based on what his play is on the field. And we all know, we all know that he's not nearly worth them. And I've been I've made to the longest of times that he would not be a good safe, not at all. Especially if we look at the way that he tackled last year. And safety, he would not be worth it at that price tag. So. He should no way be uh, put the team. Here's the big thing, though. I mean, Fahey said, we discussed this on our show last night with Kyle Fahey, that none of us thought that that was Darrell Revis in the video. The voice doesn't sound like him at all. I posed an interesting maybe conspiracy theory that maybe Darrell Revis took a fall guy. I mean, really, I guess people post stuff on social media all the time, but it just seemed weird to, like, film it, like, right after the video. And maybe, just maybe... Revis did knock guys out. I'm not going to say it's impossible. And then told one of his boys or one of his cronies, hey, listen, film a video um, and, th- and it's where you said that you knocked him out, and I'll make sure that, you know, somehow, some way, I get somebody to throw a family member or something, so, some kind of hush money, and you could be the fall guy for me so that I don't get in trouble. Now, that's a conspiracy theory. And I'm not saying that's true, but it's, it's something to think about. And as far as, you know, if Revis didn't do that, he wasn't the first. Right. Yeah, I, I made that reference on the show. Yeah, no, that, that, that's, that's the Chris Carter move right there. No, sorry, I cut you off. Continue. Okay, and, you know, like, why would, like, let's say Revis didn't do it. Like, one of his boys or someone who he was with ended up knocking those guys out. I mean, they still said it was Revis that, that did it. Now, they could have been a drunken mess, maybe just were disillusioned, but also maybe they just said, hey, listen, let's accuse Revis because one thing's for sure, we know Revis has deep pockets, and if, anything, if anyone knows anything about suing someone in this country, you sue the deepest pockets. You don't sue some poor guy. You sue some guy that has a lot of money. The very least, you can settle, and you can maybe get a couple hundred grand or something like that. No, yeah, exactly. I, so. I, I think, I think that's, that, that's a very real possibility, although we don't want to sound you know, crazy. I mean, it, you never know. You never know with people. It's, it's, everything's public. And, and, Revis did uh, knock out. Um, well, we, we don't know, Kyle, and none of us were there. I, I, and... and very he may very well might have been 100% in the wrong and beat up an innocent man. Is it more likely that that the guys were Wait, annoying him? Listen, we we have a producer on the line who has had his run-ins with Darrell Revis. We can have a viable witness come on right now. To say what, Kyle? <laughs> David, okay. David, actually, this is actually a good good job, Kyle. Let's 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 give everybody some background. And uh, David, uh, if it, you can unmute him uh, whenever he, you get a chance. But David, I, I believe he went to Muhammad Wilkerson's, you know, strikes, you know, whatever bowling, you know, charity it is. Stri- it's called strikes and scholarships. David, yeah, there it is. David, you played basically the role of the guy who got knocked out because it, if I remember <laughs> correctly, you were telling me you were just following him around and annoying it. That's you, not you, no, not I, you. I, you were you, can, you were trying to talk to him. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It, did, it seems all like a, I did was a less... asking for a pic and his autograph. That's it. But it wasn't How just me. Times? It no, wasn't. No, no, hold on. Hold on. Like when you first, when you no, when you told the story, you said you went up to him like four or five times. It no, sounds, I did not. It, uh, okay, but I'll take you at your listen, word. Listen, fake news. Okay, but listen, it wasn't just me because other Jet fans were complaining about him too at the event. So I'm complaining about him now. That doesn't mean I think he knocked out a guy. Well. 
Well, I'm Rebus just saying, is just like, g- generally a shy person, but let's be honest. None of us know him. None I of wouldn't us know. use the term shy. I would, well, no, I can't use that term either. Um, I would say a jerk. No. True. Kyle. All right. Kyle, how many times in your entire life have you met Darrell Rebus? Uh, zero. Exactly. So let's, let's leave it at that. Kyle Smith, great job as always there. Um, go ahead and give out your, your show's information. I haven't called in a while. I'll, I'll have to call in uh, next week. But you, you guys do a tremendous show on, on all things AFC East. And, and we, hey, you know, bad, bad. hey you're, you're one of those guys that is just consistently making good stuff, uh, even during this dry spell. So uh, congrats on all your success, um, and go ahead and plug your show's information. Well, thank you for your kind words, and I'll return some kind words to you. Fahey's been doing his hair lately before he comes on our show, and I said, hey, Fahey, like, I see you're doing your hair. It looks good. <laughs> I guess you're trying to keep up with your good-looking co-host. And I said, there you know, Ben Blessington, he's a good-looking guy, and, you know, uh, say he said that he looks better than you, basically. So. Well, 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 we can let the public decide. Uh, That's not what I said. I, 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 said, I, 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 I said based on I, background information, I'd rather be me. <laughs> I mean, I have, well, all right. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I'm, I'm, oh, no. I vote, I vote blood on that one. Anyway, uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, AFC East Bros, we do a show about the AFC East. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher. We have a show on YouTube as well. Same thing uh, on Twitter at AFC East Bros. And thank you so much for having me, guys. Take care. And yeah, thanks for coming on, man. We'll make sure to tweet that out. Thanks for being on, Kyle. Okay. All right, that was Kyle for AFC East Bros. Wow, Kyle attacking me and my looks. Impressive. No, no, no. That's, what, that's a new lo- that's a new low for you, man. No, what he said was, oh, you're trying to compete with Ben because I comb my hair because we have to use the camera on AFC East Bros. So I don't want to make myself look terrible. Which you know, it goes on YouTube. He gets a fair amount of views. I don't want to. I don't want to hurt the jet take in any way. And he made that comment, and I said, oh, "Well, I'd rather be me, knowing background information." I rather what does be that me. mean? Knowing background information. That's just knowing background information. I would rather be me. What did I do that would? Uh, whatever. I, I I don't understand. But anyways, we'll we'll keep going. Uh, if based on background information, I'd rather be Darrell Revis. Let's be honest here. Michael oh. Jordan, LeBron James. I'll t- I'll take any of them. <laughs> oh yeah, but, probably. Uh, well, no. anyways, let's go to our next caller of the night. And uh, just a reminder. Actually, I'll just ask you live on air. Kyle, do do you want to keep going after six thirty, or would you like to end it? Because let's oh go. no, I'm definitely going to keep going. Okay, so uh, I'll be ducking out of here at 6.30. I have a place to be, um, but we have Besides minutes. the jet take? Come on, Ben. It's, it's, hey, if I had a choice, I'd rather be doing this. Um, we're, now our next caller of the night is going to be Hakeem, one of my it's favorite callers. Uh, you have to go to the dentist? No, not the dentist. Uh, Hakeem, how's it going, man? Hey, my man. Hey, guys. How you guys doing? It's good. I haven't, I haven't talked to you in a while because, you know, I've been gone and, and whatnot. But you, you're, you're one of my favorite callers. You're very optimistic uh, and knowledgeable, and, you, and you, you're, you're a fan of the show. So always good to have you, Hakeem. Uh, let's go ahead. And we're, we're, we're going to talk about something else because we, we've been talking about that, that back end of the Jets defense for a while. And we're going to come back to that in a bit. But let's talk about the front seven, uh, including the linebackers and the defensive line. Uh, some some holes here for sure. Uh, let, let let's first start with the defensive line. I mean, you you look at Mahabu Wilkerson coming off a down year, Leonard Williams coming off a, a very you know promising year, and hope that he can build on that. Um, obviously, he's not the the you know world renowned JJ Watt you know pass rusher, but he's a guy who's very disruptive versus the run, a solid pass rusher, and an all around good player that's taking double teams and freeing up his teammates. So Leonard Williams is definitely a guy. That's going to be back next year and should get a long-term deal done uh, within the next few years because um, he's a guy you want to keep around. But uh, back to back to Muhammad Wilkinson for a second. He's a guy that's coming off of a very down year. Is not not nearly as productive as he was. Um, I think I think you can you can say the the inclusion of of another star defensive end and Sheldon Richardson hurt his production because and, and all the Jets defensive ends because when you saw the Jet when the Jets only played two defensive ends they, they had their best yeah, games getting after the quarterback and maybe it's coincidence but I think I think this just Todd Bowles defense runs better with two defensive ends instead of trying to play Sheldon outside linebacker um, but Mahal Wilkson was also injured and, and was struggling to come back from his broken leg did not show the same explosiveness basically looks like he was taking plays off and whatnot um, so, so let's, let's talk about him for a second. Uh, what, what do you think his future could entail for the New York Jets? Sheldon Richardson is obviously the one that is, 
uh, most likely going to be gone via trade, uh, possibly release, but I, I think the Jets are probably going to trade him. But And before we get into to the Sheldon Richardson stuff, let's talk about Mahal Wilkerson. What do you predict for him next year? Do you, do you think he can come back and, and be the, the player he was in 2015, or do you think 2016 was a sign of things to come? No, I absolutely believe that Muhammad Wilkerson will step back into form next year. Um, if you look at the way he finished the season, he had a sack in each game, uh, in the New England and Buffalo game. So I like I, li- I like what I saw there at the end. Um, and you know he felt more comfortable. But it's a big year for him, along with Sheldon Richardson, because you know after this year, the Jets are uh, you know will have to make a decision on Sheldon Richardson if they don't trade him this year. Um, and as well as Muhammad Wilkerson. If he has a poor year, uh, the Jets are potentially might cut him. And, yes, they'll have some dead money, but overall they'll be saving a lot more money. So uh, it's, it's a big year for Mo Wilk. He's got to step up, but I think he is one of our, you know, young leaders. We gave him the big contract. I, I do believe that he's going to perform. And I really like our interior defensive line. Obviously, we have, uh, you know, Leonard Williams, Shelly Richardson, and Wilkerson, along with McClendon and Deion Simon. Uh, what, what the Jets defensive line is missing is that edge rusher. And um, I think, you know, when we talk about the front seven, I think that's, uh, you know, our edge rusher can possibly change the dynamic of our defense so quickly. And getting a, a, a great pass rusher on the edge will open up everything on the interior along with, just, uh, you know, it'll help the corners out. It, it's, it just works all its magic all the way around. So, um, yeah, I think, you know, Ed Rusher, we got to get to the draft for that. But as far as interior defensive line, uh, I'm, I'm actually happy with how we're moving there. No, yeah, I think the Jets definitely have some talented young uh, defensive linemen. Deion Simon is a guy that I'm expecting to take the next step uh, this, this coming year. I think he's a guy that really flashed in, in his time out there. Steve McClendon is a guy I don't think the Jets should bring back. Due to his cap situation, he might be coming back, uh, and in that case, he should definitely take a backseat to Simon and just be a situational guy uh, on running downs and, and whatnot. Um now, now I, I want to pose this question to you, uh, Fahey and Hakeem. I'll start with you, Fahey. Um, Sheldon Richardson, uh, a lot of people have been saying, you know, that basically there's three options for the Jets here. You can trade him, you can uh, cut him, or you can keep him. Um, I don't think the Jets, obviously, I mean, I guess you could say the fourth option would be uh, keep him and then keep him for, you know, basically the rest of his career for, for the, the short future. That third option, when I say keep him, means, you know, keep him and then he'll probably leave him free agency in two years or one year or whatever it is. Um, Kyle, uh, what option do you think they should take? And obviously the, the, the initial option is, oh, you trade him. However, this has been posed with his decreasing value uh, you might only get a you might only get a fourth for him. Some are saying a fifth. You could get no. a third or maybe a second. Uh, his value is really ranging because of his off the field issues, and in the, you know he he has pretty much had just a steady decline since 2014. Um, what do you think the Jets should do? Because the argument is, well, if you keep him, you just keep another talented young player on your team for the rest of the year. Then he's going to leave in free agency, and the compensatory pick you're going to get it probably would be higher than the, the trade you're going to get, or maybe he has a better year uh, and you can trade him for a second next year. So that was the argument somebody, somebody posted to me on Twitter was you keep him for one more year, maybe he raises his value and you tag and trade him to somebody, or he, ra- he, or he plays throughout the year for, for better or for worse, leaves in free agency, and you get a compensatory pick that's going to be around at or better than the, the value you get via trade. However, it would be, you know, two, three years from now. Um, do, do you think the Jets should do that? Do you think they should try to trade him for a third, fourth, whatever they're going to get? Uh, or do you think the Jets should just flat out cut him? I, uh, if we cut him, we're absolutely stupid because... Well, can... well, okay, you, you would still be using the compensatory argument. It would just be, I don't want him on the team because he's a, he's a bad influence and the team seems to work better when he's not on the field. The, the, the compensatory pick is going to be at the most the 31st pick, and the fourth round. I'm currently looking at the Jets' compensatory pick whoa, right whoa, now. Whoa, 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 no, no, no. You, you, can get a, you can get a compensatory pick higher than that. Well, look at it this way. They judge it based off of the player they lost, right, and how he did the following season. Damon Harrison was an all-pro this year, right? First team all-pro in almost everybody's mind. An amazing player. 
we only got the fourth round 31st overall pick. And Sheldon Richardson, you know, I, I doubt he's going to be an all-pro next year like Damon Harrison was. And they're very close in position-wise. And if we do the franchise tag thing... No, well, it, that, there, there's your key mistake. Very close is not the yeah. same. Damon Harrison was a defensive tackle. Yeah, but he was an all-pro defensive tackle. If if Sheldon Richardson is a well, you above, also you, you also have to put in the fact that the Jets, the Jets signed Jarvis Jenkins, although they released him before the quote unquote deadline. Um, I'm still I, I'm pretty sure that factored into to, to the decision of what pick they got due to his um, not only Damon uh, Damon Harrison's success in 2014 2015, but the the, the fact that the Jets signed Jarvis Jenkins. I'm pretty sure once he signed. Oh, okay. Anyways, the point is, is that a fourth, third round pick is probably what the Jets are going to get right now. You never know. Um, Hakeem, yeah. I'll ask. I'll ask you the same question. Uh, Hakeem, I'll ask you the same question. W- w- which route do you think the Jets should go with Sheldon Richardson? Yeah, yeah. I think um, my uh, addition here will clarify some things. Ben, I'm I'm on board with you know just keeping him because the compensatory pick will be of the same potentially equal value of what we're going to get now. And the fourth round, 31st pick, that's not a bad pick. Obviously, you'd want a third rounder. And it's not also how the player plays, but it also matters on how big the contract was. And Damon Harrison is a nose tackle, so he was never going to smell the type of money that Mo Wilk made or that Sheldon Richardson has the potential of seeing. But my real point with uh, Sheldon Richardson is, we, and this kind of applies also to Calvin Pryor, is these guys, you know, Sheldon Richardson has always been talking about his money and how he wants to get paid. Okay, buddy, well, now you're in your contract year. This is your time to put up or shut up. I want to see you. Um, you got to put your money where your mouth is this time because he has to. He's put all the pressure on himself. And honestly, he can either use that to push himself forward and get to the next level, become a consistent Pro Bowl player, or – He's going to let it, you know, uh, rattle him, and he's going to have another poor season. So he's, you know, he's uh, in a very key position. And, and you know what? Uh, the Jets have kept their options open. Because let's say Mo Wilk has another bad year. Then they're just going to get rid of him, cut him, trade him, whatever they need to do. They're going to eat the dead cap money, and then they're just going to re-sign Sheldon Richardson if he has a monster year. So, and also we always have that potential to just – uh, tag them and then trade them for maybe a second round pick. Um, so I'm, I'm I'm with you there, Ben. Um, so I, I think we should keep him because he's got a load of talent, and this is his contract year along with Calvin Pryor. I want to keep him as well, and, and we'll see what happens. You know, I think the, the, those guys can play up to their potential, and you know, big um, players always play their best in their contract year. Well. Uh... Just a quickly butt in here thing. About the tag and trade thing, if we do franchise tag Sheldon Richardson, I believe they compile that out of the top five players, and then that's how the salary at the position, like the top five salaries, and that's how they get the franchise tag out of that. Sheldon Richardson's franchise tag is going to be a pretty hefty price. I mean, I would imagine upwards of $13, $14 million, something in that price range. And for defensive end who – you know, I don't know what you guys think he'll have this year, but I doubt it will be an all-pro year for him just based off of what he's shown me in his best years and the talent that he has around him right now, just fighting for reps between Leonard Williams and Muhammad Wilkerson. That, I don't know if a lot of teams will take that. I think while we have him cheap and we can get him in a very good draft class with a lot of talent, possibly even package him with our second-round pick, move up into the first round, as I alluded to earlier, or you can just go ahead and get a third round pick for him or, you know, another package with another player or straight up swap. Uh, me and David were talking earlier. He said possibly trade Sheldon for a corner. I, I could possibly see that happening with some teams. Uh, I, I, I think we should get rid of him now while he's cheap and, you know, he's just possibly not in more trouble. We don't know what's going to happen again. No, yeah, no, I, I, he's he's one he's one more incident away from a ten game suspension. So that's yeah. definitely something. His future is definitely something that's going to be uh, scaring off a lot of teams. All right, let's let's switch topics here for a bit. Um, the the other you know sort of lingering topic is what are the Jets going to do at quarterback next year? It certainly won't be Ryan Fitzpatrick next year. Um, however, God. I do think that. 
well, yeah. Uh, however, I, you, you never know with Geno Smith. Uh, he probably won't be back. I think you can... Seven if, you're, if you're a betting man, 95% of the chance he probably won't be back. But uh, if the, the free agent market is dry and Geno's not getting a lot of offers, uh, maybe the Jets sign him to a one-year deal and then uh, bring him back. But... Um, so it'll most likely be a new guy under center for the Jets, uh, at least until Bryce Petty or Christian Hackenberg can beat out uh, the, the veteran they bring in. Uh, there, are, there are loads of options. Jay Cutler is a guy who's become available, and um, I, wherever the no sound, well, we can no. Jay Cutler is a guy. No. To the no, no, no. To the no, no, To the no, to the no, 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 no. Listen. <laughs> There's my reaction to Jay Cutler, uh, and I, that's judging everybody's by, reaction. Judging by your, yeah, Cutler. judging by your moans, Kyle, I'm going to guess that's your reaction as well. It so I think happy. we should. Akeem, what, what do you think about Jake bringing in Jay Cutler? Uh, some Jets fans think he could be valuable because of his background with Matt Forte and Brandon Marshall, um, but I think that's moving in the opposite direction. My personally, for me, because again, as we talked with Kyle, this should be a team that's moving in the youth movement, and Jay Cutler is not only old but hasn't been very productive. But also life. sucks. They, well, that's in a less eloquent way, but yes, Akeem, yeah. what, what, what are your thoughts on Jay Cutler? Yeah, I would never ask Jay Cutler to even visit our training facility. Um, I'm welcome. definitely against him. He's not welcome at all, for sure. Um, I, I'm, I'm, We're gonna ban I'd rather him. just draft. I'd rather just draft another young quarterback um, in, in the later rounds or in the second round. You know, wherever uh, McCagnan and Bull sees the value and they find their guy. You know, you, you don't find, you know, it's tough to find magic in a bottle in free agency with a quarterback. And I'm always looking to just find our new franchise one. And you can only really find the franchise quarterback is through the draft. But I do agree with your previous call, you know, Kyle Smith from the AFC East Bros, that quarterback is the one position that, you know, the Jets uh, should be allowed to spend money on. Um, but I also agree with you, Ben, that the second position, if, if the Jets had to spend money on, if they couldn't get uh, Tyrod, or even if they did still get Tyrod, would be cornerback. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm, I'm with you guys both on there. I know <clears throat> we have to kind of, you know, realize that we're going to be, you know, in the bargain, um, we're going to be in the bargain bin, bargain bin section of uh, the free agency market, and uh, <clears throat> I just think that. Tyrod Taylor is a good option, but he's going to cost a lot of money. And realistically, I only want to spend money on one high-ticket uh, free agent, and that would be, you know, a cornerback because I don't think Tyrod Taylor is going to shake loose. But I would bring in Matt Barkley because it's – Let me dream. Year. Yeah, I would uh, bring Matt Barkley in just to compete. He's a young player. Uh, he could be kind of that veteran presence. He has a good amount of starts on him, and he's also familiar with John Morin. Um, and – but – I would also draft another one. So I'm looking at uh, Gerard Evans in the fifth round from quarterback from Virginia Tech to develop him, and also Pat Mahomes. I, I see a lot of uh, Ben Roethlisberger traits in Pat Mahomes. Um, I, I like the kid a lot as a prospect. Uh, obviously, we'll see if the Jets are sold on him. I'm sure they're going to be doing extensive work on him. But that, that's how I feel about our quarterback situation. And, okay, uh, so really quickly – sorry, sorry, Kyle. Well, the, if it's really quick, just – say it but uh I, i'm starting to really like jerron evans and we're gonna have connor rogers on next week from bleacher report Ger- is that the guy from virginia yeah. tech yeah and he, yeah. he recently wrote a thing about him and how he's basically said that if he's the guy that, if you're looking for a quarterback to develop besides patrick mahomes that he is your guy to go but here's to. the thing kyle and and for other teams maybe that's the thing but the jets don't need another the jets the jets can't develop yeah, we, we don't need another bryce petty christian Hack. Yeah. i mean yeah, oh, even yeah. though drought heavens might have a higher ceiling or whatever this this is i mean i think patrick mahomes is the best qb to develop but i think he as far oh, as yeah as, i agree i think I you're agree. saying you're saying late later around the guy yeah i think drought evans is definitely a guy who could be good all right guys really quickly let's let's go around uh we're, we're going to go through all the possible qbs at least for the, the ones we can think of this week we might add some more next week if, if some come up but jay cutler out of five how much do you want him uh i'll give a zero out of five for me um kyle um the square root of negative one yeah zero for me as well all right. Um, all right, and then the, the next option is Matt Barkley, um, Hakeem, uh, uh, out of five. Uh, two, two. <laughs> I go with the all two. All right. Uh, Kyle? Uh, I'll go three and a half. 
Hmm, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll give him a three. Um, so Kyle, you're going three point five, and I'll go uh, three as well. Um, the next option, and we'll we'll do free agents now, and then I guess next week we'll go into to, to the draft guys. But as far as free agent quarterbacks go, Glennon, Mike Glennon, uh, the former Tampa Bay Buccaneers quarterback, until he was, you know, replaced by uh, James Winston. Uh, I'll you, give you him... mean Josh McCown, and then James Winston. <laughs> well, it was Josh McCown, and then it was Mike Lennon, and then it was... No, James no, Smith. they... Yes, yes, yes. No, no, they... Trust me, Ben. Trust me here. I'm going to look this up right now. You're going to make me lose. All right, right we'll, we'll, I'll we'll go, go back uh, to that. A one for keep... Glennon. A one? A one for Glennon. I have a, you know, a harsh rating tool, obviously. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't. Glennon isn't a guy that I think is particularly good. I don't. I, I I'm not falling in the. Um, a lot a lot of Jets fans do seem seem to have a crush on Mike Glennon. I don't think he's that good or talented. I don't think he's what the Jets need. Um, or sorry, I, I should rephrase that. I, however, let me rephrase that. I don't think he's that talented. I don't think he's that good. However, for what the Jets need, he could be solid. He's a young guy. He is is at least a starter in this league. He's a guy who can at least go in. Um, would be a solid competition for Petty and Hackenberg, and who knows, maybe he can impress. Um, but I don't think, I mean, especially since he hasn't started in at least a year or two, um, I think uh, my interest in Glennon, uh, I'll, I'll go... I'll go three point seven five. So to, to be very <laughs> really specific. more than Matt Barkley. Ah, uh, well. Uh, at least Matt Barkley has shown us something week in and week out. That's a good point. Barkley, at least. So I'm gonna bump Barkley. Well, okay. I'll bump Barkley. You know Barkley what, Glennon. Up. Glennon is a good prospect, so I understand why we're you know tantalized by him. But the only problem I have with him is he's gonna command maybe like twenty a million guaranteed in his contract just because of the Osweiler effect. So that's the only thing I'm scared of. I do like him as a prospect, and if he doesn't require a lot of money, I, I would like to bring him in, but yeah. he's going to cost a lot. Yeah, if, if the money is – I think if, if – so the way I'm going to grade this is, is when, you, when you factor in the money, the talent, what the Jets need really, you know, who should be the Jets quarterback. Uh, when you factor all that, that in, that's what I'll give the score. So I'm going to bump Barkley up. Uh, I'm going to bump him up to 3.5, and I'm going to keep Glennon. I'm going to move Glennon down to 3.5. I think they're around even. Um, if I had to choose, I'd actually probably go Barkley. So actually, I'm going to move Glennon I, I down. I definitely to three. would. I'll go. I'll go, I'll go. I'll go Glennon three, uh, Barkley 3.5. Now that I think about it, he definitely he did have some good success with the Bears at the end of this of the year. So I think he could be a solid, at least for what the Jets need, and he'll be cheap. Um, the next guy on the market, I guess, will go with everybody's favorite quarterback, Tyrod Taylor. Um, I mean, if you're factoring in the price and what the Jets need, I would I would say, I guess for free agent quarterbacks it's a five. However, I don't think the Jets should do it. But if out of out of all the free agent quarterbacks, who's the best? And if he came to the Jets, who would be the best under center? It'd be it'd be Tyrod Taylor. Hakeem. Yeah, I'll give uh, Tyrod a four out of five. I, I would really like him, but obviously he's not a true elite franchise player but he would be a great building block for us to move forward. Yeah, especially if you don't believe in Petty or Hackenberg. Tyrod's at least young enough where he can carry this franchise for a few years um, until until they find their next guy. Yeah, but you can still let Petty and uh, Hack develop under him. And so it it saves – it's it's a win-win for both ways. Uh, Kyle, your ranking on Tyrod? Uh, (laughs) 4.666. <laughs> okay, four point six. Uh, the next no, guy. No, it would actually be rounding. Oh, I didn't round any other ones, but so <laughs> we're just not going to round them. Romo, uh, Tony Romo will um, out of out of you know when you uh, factor in what the Jets need, the price, um, talent, his overall ranking for me would be I, I, a two. Um, I think he's a very talented quarterback, and if the Jets. If if you're looking at the roster the Jets had last year, or at least the expectations, I should probably say, because I mean the roster the Jets had last year was the one that we got this year. Um, but at least if you're looking at the expectations, a team coming off ten and six, Romo would be a five for me. He's a guy that hey, you take this team, very talented with Ryan Fitzpatrick, you put in Romo and maybe he takes some places. But as we prove, this team needs to to rebuild. So I think Romo I'll give it two. Um, however, if you had if I had to rank all the quarterbacks in terms of you know skill. Who would be who's the best? He'd probably be two behind Tyrod for me, just because Tyrod. Well, actually, if you're going on the field skill, it's probably Romo's number one, but Tyrod's younger and whatnot. Anyways, Kyle, you're ranking on Romo. 
you know, I, I would give him a two, but, you know, if Obamacare getting repealed, I don't know how he's going to have to pay for all these back surgeries. I mean, I, I, I don't know what we're going to do, so I'll give him a one. All right, and Hakeem? Yeah, I'll give him a three. I think, you know, he, he's still a quality NFL starter. And uh, to, to get him on board, say, if you traded for him, it would be $14 million this year, which I think is a manageable number since we just gave Fitzpatrick $12 million. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, um, but you know what, before and after we end this quarterback thing, um, I want to I wanna actually ask you guys a question about a potential free agent player that says he wouldn't mind playing for the Jets. Kevin Minter. Yeah, exactly. Kevin Minter. I don't know if you guys discussed it before I got on board, but, uh, but let's finish the quarterback thing. Yeah, we, we have a few more, then we'll talk about that. Uh, then we'll say goodbye to Hakeem, and then we'll do David's trivia question, and then I'll, I'll jump out. Um, all right, sweet. Uh, so let's go, let's go Nick Foles next. I think we, I, I'm writing it as I go, so maybe two or three more, but uh, maybe this is the last one. So anyways, Nick Foles, I don't, we're, we're, this is all very freestyle. Uh, Nick Foles, for me, um, me uh, I'll go with, I gave Barkley a 3.5. And as far as what the Jets need, I, I, uh, I think he's probably – I'll go 3.5 as well, so he's going to tie for Barkley with me. Actually, no, okay, hold on. Let me, let me put Barkley at 8. Wow, this is – I mean, these, these, all these guys are just mediocre, so it's hard to really rank yeah. them. I mean, you're looking at Barkley and Glennon and Foles. It's like – oh, uh, gosh. Yeah, Barkley, are- Barkley – I think Barkley is the, low, a low, the lowest ceiling out of all of them, so I'll give Barkley a 3.25. Glennon, I'm going to – I'll give a 3.5. I'm bumping him up. I'm changing this all as I go. And Foles, I'll give a um, 3.6. <laughs> that was odd. 3.75, just make it nice and clean. Um, Kyle, Hakeem? Hakeem, I'll let you yeah, first. Yeah, sure. I'll probably uh, go with the same rating I gave Barkley as a 2. Basically, you know, we have all these mediocre quarterbacks, and we just got to hopefully find one that meshes well with our system, our coaches. And, uh, but, you know, we'll see what happens, right? Yeah, and I believe I said it wrong. I meant, I meant to say Foles gives the 3.25 and Barkley 3.75. I'm giving Barkley just the advantage here and Glennon at a 3.5. Um, I think that's yeah. where, probably where I'll keep it. Barkley, however, has shown the least amount of stuff. But my only concern with Glennon, he, he hasn't played in like two years. That's the, that's the one thing that's like concerning to me. He's been around. It's just he hasn't played as a starter. Uh, Kyle, you're ranking on Foles, so I'll give, I'll give Barkley probably the highest realistic opportunity for us. But, uh, uh, I'd probably give Foles a three. He, you know, he had, he had a pretty decent year in 2013 with the Eagles when he worked with guys like Deshaun Jackson and Riley Cooper, Jason Avant, guys like that, even Brad Smith, former Jet. So he's proven that he can work with some okay receivers. I think the Jets receiving core is better than that. So, you know, it, it isn't the worst option, but um, probably wouldn't be mine. Yeah, I mean, he is a guy that that is a game manager. He's he's a Fitzpatrick, uh, but a little younger and yeah. a little better. But he, yeah, he's Fitzpatrick and he's kind of journeyman average. So as far, I mean, if you're looking at the, because it seems like Barkley, Glennon, and Foles are the most likely options. If you have to decide between the three of them, and and I, I believe we're going to end the free agent quarterbacks here. If if we remember any more, um, we're going to tack it onto the draft quarterback. Oh man, I have to correct you. I was right about the uh, Josh McCown thing. You were right about Josh McCown. Yeah. It was Glennon to start the year and then it was McCown? Uh, no, it was no. Glennon in 2013, but they signed Josh McCown from Chicago. Because remember when Jay Cutler got hurt and McCown came in and he threw like 12 touchdowns and whatever it was in like four games. He had a pretty good – Oh, pretty good. I, oh yeah, sorry. My bad. And I Mike thought, Glennon I thought... had, Mike Glennon sucked, so they brought in, you know, an old quarterback who – isn't that good to replace them? I, I see. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Now, now it's coming back to me. Um, okay. So those are our free agent rankings. So for Hakeem, the best case scenario for him, uh, I mean, well, obviously for the best case for all of us was Tyra, but knock, knocking him out, these are the realistic options. We all give Cutler zero. Um, the <laughs> best option for Hakeem would be uh, Romo, he said. Um, for Kyle, knocking out Tyra, Ty his God. best option would be obviously Ty God, uh, but if you're going with something else, I'll go. Where, where does it say Kyle? 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 There it is. I think, yeah, three point five. Kyle, you get Barkley the highest rating, 
And me... Uh, I give Hoth. I give Tyrod the highest ranking. No, I said besides Tyrod. And for oh, me, oh. I, I, I kept changing mine as you guys were talking. Uh, I have Foles and Glenn, Barkley tied at 3.75, but I'll say Foles because I do think he's the veteran presence the Jets need. Um, not, not the one they deserve, but the one they need right now. Um, anyways, uh, I think that'll do it for our free agent quarterback. Uh, so, Hakeem, you wanted to talk about Minter, and I know, Kyle, that was something you wanted to talk about as well. Uh, I do have to uh, get off the air in a bit. Get out. Six minutes. So, Hakeem, you have the floor, uh, and give us give us your take. Yeah, yeah. And I'll just go over with what he kind of said to me. He said, I would like to be back with the Cardinals, but I'm curious to see what's out there in free agency. I definitely wouldn't mind playing in New York. Coach Bowles was the one who essentially drafted me. So I, I like that, you know, he's got familiarity with the system. So this is in case, you know, a good backup plan in case we have to get rid of and cut David Harris uh, because, you know, he's an expensive option and he's only a two-down uh, linebacker for us uh, because we had Dur- Duran Lee taking over uh, the nickel role uh, late last season. But I, I like it. You know, the Cardinals have 20 free agents, so there's going to be a lot of moving pieces for them. And I think Minter could slide in nicely. Uh, right next to Deron Lee, and uh, hopefully solidify that interior linebacking group. Um, so I, I would, I like that. You know, f- uh, finally, a, a someone, a free agent, is talking about coming to the Jets. I think it's kind of refreshing for us Jets fans. Yeah, yeah, no, I, what I'll yeah, say about Kevin Minter. Sorry. Kind of sorry. Mentor, sorry. <laughs> uh, like, I want to say three or four years ago, I. That's he was in that first draft class that I really started looking at the draft oh God. really he, hard he's when compulsive. I started getting. He, he's no, and I, I and I remember this episode, dude. And I remember I didn't <laughs> like him because I remember the Florida Gator yeah. running back. Took a, he's took on a turn. San Fran. He's on San Fran right now. God, what's his name? Uh, Carlos Hyde. No, he Florida no. Gators running back. Oh, um, hold on. And he's on San Fran. God, I forget his name. But he just burned him against LSU. And I'm like, man, this guy will never be NFL material. And now, you know, he's in the free agency market. I believe he had like 80 tackles last year. David told me three and a half sacks. Not that bad for an inside linebacker. So I, I definitely wouldn't Taylor? be against No. What? That doesn't make sense. Sorry. <laughs> no. no. Kelvin Taylor. Kelvin no. Taylor. Yeah, hold on. It's just it was the first one that popped up. San Francisco 49ers draft Florida running back Kelvin Taylor. From no. Earlier, it's it's. I know Sean Drawn. Is that him? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's it. Is okay. Yeah. Um. Okay. So you know he he's proven me all a little bit. He's had a pretty nice career, and I guess Todd Bowles. I guess he scouted him out in Arizona, uh, according to Kevin Mentor. So I I wouldn't be against the signing. He's, yeah, this is his fourth year. I'm looking it up right now on the ESPN. His fourth year in the NFL. Six foot, 246 pounds, decent size for a linebacker, at least. Cons- compared to our inside linebackers. And he's only 26 years old, so he's a guy you can sign to like a three-, four-year contract. And when he's done with it, he's 29 years old, and you can give him that, you know, last contract and that his career. Well, you know, here's the I, – I actually like Minter a lot. He was one of the guys when when we, we were first doing our, our free agent primers. Uh, I, was, I was writing a little piece. He was one of those guys that I think the Jets should target. He, he is that, that second, third-level tier guy that I was talking about earlier. He's young. I mean, he fits basically all the check boxes that we were just talking about earlier for a Jets free agent signing. Um, I think the Jets should probably look to move on from David Harris because his play is not only deteriorated, um, but he's, he's going to make $7, 8000000 million next year. And I, and I don't think – uh, excuse me. If I, I think if the Jets can get out of that, they should. And then, you know, David Harris can go play for a team that, that can go win in, in some of his twilight years. Um, and so they can part mutually on good terms. Uh, so I think I think that uh, Minter is, is a guy who who is in bowl system, as you said. The, the Cardinals have 20 free agents. He's he's certainly a guy who could slip through the cracks. Um, and and pairing him next to Darren Lee, that'd be a nice little linebacking core. So I, I think he's a very talented guy. Um, and next year, next week and, and the week after that will be uh, as free agency starts to I think free agency starts in two or three weeks. Uh, we'll re- we'll release more of the guys as we want. But but that is a perfect example of if a guy the Jets should target, a guy who had a, a smaller role uh, on his previous team and is going to jump to the Jets and and they're going to try to make him a bigger role. You don't want to you don't want to take the Idzik strategy of Mike Goodson and and whatnot. Um, but you want you want those mid level guys, young guys. Uh, cheap contracts, you know, maybe three-year contracts or whatever. Um, 
Listen, Hakeem, uh, we're going to have to let you go, man. Good stuff as always. Go ahead and get shout out your Twitter, man. Uh, you, you, you gave some fire uh, today. Uh, the, the, you're ending on a good note. You're ending with the mentor. Uh, everybody agreed with you, um, so you're getting out on a high note. But uh, go ahead and shout out your uh, information. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on. Uh, my Twitter handle is at Hakeem Amir. Uh, feel free to tweet at me about Jet stuff. That's all, that's all I do 24-7 is breed Jets football. Uh, and <clears throat> next time I call in, I want to discuss the offensive tackle situation and how we're going to address it and fix it because uh, I know a lot of people are saying go free agency, free agency, but um, I don't think they really know what's out there in free agency. Uh, but, yeah, uh, thanks Pretty for good. having me on, guys. Really appreciate it. I uh, really like your guys' work. Uh, excited to see what you guys do moving forward. Thank you. Hey, thank you, man. That, that means a lot. And that was Hakeem. Um, good stuff from him, as always. We're going to go ahead and bring on Gang Green David to read out the trivia question for Kyle and I, um, and then I will I will get going. A uh, quick announcement uh, before David gives his trivia question. Uh, next week we will be joined by Connor Rogers. Um, hey. We had him on last year around this time um, to, to talk some draft and, and Jets football in general. So next week, uh, Wednesday at 8 o'clock Eastern, um, uh, Connor Rogers will be uh, coming on the show. So, David, fire away, man. Give us this. Um, give us this trivia question. Wait, so let me, let me grab ready. my phone. Yeah. yeah. Phone. Hold on. One second. Oh my god. <clears throat> you, you guys ready? Right. Hold on. Hold, Hold on. on. This is serious. This is serious. It, the score is three to one currently. Ben is yeah. whipping me. I have a three-one lead. Yeah. So I need to get this. All right. Here we go. So David? I sent the virus to Ben's phone. Okay. Oh, the one where it, like, shuts it down? Yeah. All right. There's David. actually a new one, so... Don't, don't send it to me. David, did. go ahead. Fire away. All right. So, um, in 2011, when um, we played the Giants on Christmas Eve, um, this player scored his first career touchdown, which gave the Jets another 7 nothing lead. Who was the name of the player? No! Dang it! That is a very tough question. I, I I don't have that off the top of my head. Let me think. Let me think. Do we get multiple opportunities, or just till somebody gets it right? Well, we will we'll go both go once, and if none of us get it right, I feel dumb okay. for doing this. Uh, I think I have. No, it's not him. I had I had a very good idea at first, and then I realized it's not him. Oh God! Think, 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 think. All right, I think I think I got it. All right, send yours in, Ben. Mine was stupid because I guessed on the question, just trying to beat you out. Kyle, you said Victor Cruz. Yeah, well, you said Cruz. And Ben, you said Bilal Powell. It g- I said in the question, it gave the Jets an early 7 nothing lead. Yeah, Kyle, I don't know what you gave Victor Cruz. Yeah, I, well, you said the Giants. <laughs> you guys want to know the correct answer was? No, no, no. no, wait, no, give, no, give, no, us, no. give us one more chance. Give us one more chance. Wait, was I wrong? Well, um, yes. Kyle said Jeremy. Okay, so Kyle, you said Jeremy Curley. It's not Jeremy Curley. Oh. Yeah, it's not Jeremy Curley because I know you he's both were. You him. both were wrong. Oh, yeah, no, no, no don't give tell us. us. We, we got to keep going until we get it, unless unless we get like three or something. It's just ridiculous. Okay, um, keep going. Oh, uh, let me think. I gotta think of who was in this wide receiving court in 2011. I guess the Giants. And Christmas. So I remember that game. I remember that game, and I was it was horrible. He was the yeah, he scored was the, his he scored his first Cruz game, right? touchdown. Yeah. I was thinking I, I want to go out to the box and think like defense or something. Um, he scored his first career touchdown as a Jet and gave the Jets an early seven nothing lead against the Giants. Who was the player? <gasps> oh, I'll probably just like looked it up. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. No, I'm not. I think you. I think he just. Well, no, I'm probably completely wrong here, but. I think you kind of gave us a hint there. So, Ben, go ahead and give us your other answer. Okay, okay. Um, I'm, I'm just, I'm told on. Scrap my brain. I have to go soon, so let me, let me think. Um, God. Mark Sanchez already ran one in. Um... Give me a second. Did guys, stall while I think. Hold on. Oh my God! Hey, hey David, I think I, I think I have it. Okay, then what is it? Uh, ben, do you have a guess? 
I I'm I'm vaguely remembering there was there was a weird there was a weird there's no way I'm getting this. I don't remember. There was like a special teams touchdown or a defensive touchdown or something weird. Um or like a I don't remember his name. There there were I just remember some like it wasn't like Rob Turner because he was like a tackle. No, should, should, I, should I say the should I say the yeah, answer? Yeah, you say the answer because I got no, 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 no. Uh, yeah, say the answer. I'll just is I'll it just. LT. Dude, LT had been on the team in 2010. What do you? Uh, no, it's not. I'll say it Mark Sanchez. LT. I'll just say I'll just say on a QB sneak. I don't I don't know. Who was okay. it? Okay. Um, the correct answer was Mark Sanchez flipped a pass to Josh Baker. I remember that. I, dude, I and knew right that. Let's be honest. I, I thought it was, I thought it was special teams though, but it, I knew it was something weird. Something weird. Okay. Correct. How so the correct answer was Josh Baker. All right. Well, uh, never thank even you guys. Heard of never thank even you guys. Heard of I have to. Yeah, he was like a tight end. I remember him for a bit. Um, I have to go. So I guess Kyle and I are just tied at three one for now. Um, <laughs> We're both trash. Anyways, I have to go. Uh, I will see talk to you guys next week. We'll make sure this episode gets uploaded tonight. As uh, remember, a reminder that Connor Rogers um, will be coming on the show next week. Uh, David, Kyle, you guys have the floor. Uh, thank you to the rest of our callers. Sorry I couldn't get to you guys. Uh, and I hope you guys all have a uh, great uh, rest of the show. Thanks. All right, later, all right. my dude. My dude. All right, guys, so I'm taking over now. David, you're going to be the co-host for tonight. That was a really good trivia question. I don't know how you keep pulling these out of your hat. But we're going to go on to the next caller of the night, and, you know, we got to make these calls a little bit fast because me and David have something special planned for the end of the episode. Uh, and our next caller is going to be our good friend, Ryan. Ryan, thanks for calling in, man. What's up? Nothing much, guys. How are you? You know, we're pretty good. good. Yeah. Yourself? Yeah, pretty good. All right, well, let's start writing. Crazy. Oh, yeah. I mean, are you writing the checks? Is that what you mean by nope. getting ready? Uh, I don't but, blame uh, you. I'm sitting here waiting, so. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, let's hop right into it. For, I don't know how long you've been on. Oh, wow, you've been on the line for a long time, so you've probably heard all of it. Um, let's pick off right where we left off with Ben. Kevin Minter, you know, said on Sirius XM today that he wouldn't be against going to New York because of the connection to Todd Bowles. What are your thoughts on that? I was actually pretty happy. He said that uh, I think he'd be an excellent addition. You know, time to move on from Harris, unfortunately. I love Harris, but you got eight younger. Uh, Minter is 26, I believe. Yep. Uh, according to Pro Football Focus, which I don't always prefer or, or like, they uh, they graded him pretty well. So they gave him, uh, it was an 81 grade, I believe, which is pretty decently. It's not, it's not great. It's not terrible, but it's it's good. So, uh, and the continuity, knowing the system, it'd be a good addition. Yeah, and I believe uh, our last caller's uh, Alex. Was it Alex or Hakeem? Who who said that? Hakeem. It was, Hakeem. Hakeem. Yeah, Hakeem said that there were 22 free agents uh, from the Cardinals available. So it's definitely wide here from. Todd Bowles' perspective. Now, from the Mike McKagan perspective, you know, some reports coming out this week that he was a key part in signing free agent to be A.J. Boye as an undrafted free agent a couple years back. Do you think there's any possible connection there that the Jets may have may try to exploit in the contract and try and get him back? Uh, well, I would love Boye. He's my number one target for corners. Um, I've seen, was it Sunday? Morning, you know, I got a team stream alert saying the Jets are going to be exploring a top tier corner in the market. So uh, I'm hoping it's Boy. I like Johnson as well, but you know, Boy's my number one, and uh, I, I automatically thought of him just because of the uh, the Mac connection from Houston. So uh, I think that would be an excellent addition. And he's also 25 years old, so we could have him for his like his real elite years. You know, I mean, this past year was you know elite, but he can definitely continue and build off of that. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we'll keep rolling on with the Jets news. He said, uh, you know, the stream thing there. I'm sure this one surprised you when it came across your stream. I believe, what, Saturday night, Sunday morning, I believe it came out. Darrell Revis going to be charged. Four different types of charges going against him. He was booked. He's out on bail. Thoughts on the Revis situation? Uh, yeah, it was definitely uh, alarming. You know, I did not expect that. Revis has been pretty classy guy, pretty quiet guy off the field. So 
when you see that he's being charged with four felonies, you're like, you know, what happened? And uh, I watched the video that TMZ released, and uh, I know you guys were talking about it earlier about, you know, him potentially having a fall guy, but, you know, I, I don't think that was Revis who knocked, the per- knocked those two guys out. I think that, you know, they on- those people just wanted to, uh, you know, get get a, get a pretty – Yes, cash in, get a pretty nice payday. So uh, I don't. That shouldn't really affect the, affect that decision. You know, Revis, uh, he should be gone either way. But you know, uh, exactly. I'll stand up for him. Yeah, and, you know, just exactly. You're 100 percent right. Just another headline for Manish Mehta to lie about uh, in his clickbait yeah, article. He's he's just he's just bashing Revis this whole week. It's oh like yeah. Professional. Oh yeah. Total he catches in on when anybody ever does anything wrong. Between Muhammad Wilkerson missing a meeting and Darrell Rivas getting arrested, Manish Mehta is just like having the most beautiful dreams with unicorns and rainbows right now. He's loving life. Uh, let's go into another, you know, kind of breaking news thing that came out or the rumors floated around. Jay Cutler possibly coming to the Jets. Now, I don't know about oh, you, boy. but he's not my cut yeah. of meat for quarterbacks, if you see what I did there. Uh, what are your mm-hmm. thoughts on him? Well, this is probably going to surprise you, but I actually kind of like Cutler. But and, let's, let's, and, uh, we're, and we lost the connection <laughs> with Ryan. I oh uh, <laughs> don't know what happened. No! 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 Just just hear me out, all right? I'm not uh-huh. calling him. He's not. I, I know what he is, you know. There's problems with him. Uh, I really don't like his character. Let's, let's start with that. Uh, you know, obviously he's known to quit on the teams. I don't like that. Uh, the real only reason why I was telling, I mean, I somewhat like him just because of his arm strength, his, his like, talent, that, which, you know, never actually worked out in the NFL. But, I mean, I, the reason why, I don't want Mike Lennon. So, it, it's tough, you know, looking at the quarterback market. Would Kyler be my number one choice? Definitely not. You know, Tyrod's my number one. Do I think Tyrod's going to be available? Probably not. So uh, that you Don't know, that's one. My dreams. I want unicorns no, no. and rainbows too. <laughs> but um, mm-hmm. you know, based on the quarterback market, you know, when you guys were breaking down the quarterbacks earlier, and based on you know price range and everything, I would probably I would, I'd probably go with Nick Foles or Matt Barkley. But um, I something about color, he, he just like intrigues me. You know, this is talent talent, but uh, based is on the price the range, hand gonna... smoke or you know the late game quitting. Which which one do you like more? <laughs> Listen, I didn't say he was the answer or anything. I just said I wouldn't mind him for a year or two. I actually have something to say about Nick Foles. Um, listen, I would not say Nick Foles wouldn't be a bad option because if you saw how he shined in Philly, led them to the playoffs in, um, I believe it was 2013 to 14 season, you know, he was actually a really good starting quarterback up until he just got put into the backup role onto so many other teams, even with well with the L.A. Rams, although he kind of regressed. But I do see Nick Foles as a decent option as long as the offensive line gets upgraded and he can use the talent around them productively and not pull a Ryan Fitzpatrick. Now, actually, I kind of wanted to move on from all the free agency and actually just talk a little bit about the draft, um, Ryan. So, um, you know, we've been actually waiting to ask all the callers this, but... Um, who, well, I think we already asked you this, but who would you take at number six? I mean, personally, my pick at number six would be Jamal Adams, maybe because he's big body. Spoiler, he's, David. Spoiler, spoiler. Mainly because Jamal Adams is a big, he's he's got he's a big body safety. Um, he can hit, he can cover, and he's a great special teams player. So I would actually I love for him to be. Fire can do basically. Ah uh-huh. ha! But and listen, Justin will have a field day with you, Cap. But anyhow, I would actually want Jamal but if not, I would want Marshawn Lattimore, who is projected to be our pick, but he's a great ball hawk, and he can play press coverage very, very well. Who would you take, Ryan? Uh, my number one guy is Willie Cooker. Uh, I do like Jamal Adams, but I think that um, Willie Cooker, his ball range and everything, I know, you know, I know you're not a big fan, Kyle, but... Uh, no, he's actually, he's actually in my top ten talent-wise. I just, I just don't like to say it. Yeah, it just the thing is like the Jets. You guys talked about earlier. If we've had so many strong safeties over the year, I think that this is the time we take the chance, take the high roller, a guy who's a ball hawk, only a one year starter. Um, you know, I go all on it. I go all go all out and take that type of you know impact player. 
All right, Ryan. Well, Try to read your attention. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time because we do have one segment to get to at the end of the show uh, that we don't want to go way too over on. So we're going to have to let you go because we do have two more callers on the line. Thank you so much for calling in, man. Why don't you go ahead and give us all your social media accounts because you deliver fire week in and week out, and uh, the fans definitely want to listen to you some more. All right, no problem, guys. Thank you guys for having me. Uh, you guys can follow me on Twitter at NY underscore Destination 98. And before I go, I'll just say this. Listen, uh, Color is not my number one target this all season, but I, you know, you you understand what I was saying before, right? He's like, he's not my last option, but he's not my first option. So he's somewhere in the middle, but I do not want to pay for him. His price range is ridiculous. He has off the field issues, so I'd take Tyrod or Nick Foles over him, even Barkley. So good night, guys. All right, man. Thanks for calling in. Thanks for calling in, Ryan. And that was our good friend, Ryan. And we're going to go on to the second to the last caller of the night, who has been waiting patiently for 92 minutes. This this is true loyalty, even though me and him will probably get into a screaming match. This is our good buddy who we love to argue with, Justin. Justin, let's not let tempers flare. It's too late for this crap. So let's just talk (laughs) some Jets. Uh, What's up, guys? Not much, Uh, man. How about yourself? uh, Nothing much. David's new best friend. (laughs) Ha ha, Kyle. Ha ha. So, Justin, um, who will be your number one free agent that you want the Jets to sign? Would it be Melvin Ingram? Would it be a quarterback? Would it be a corner? Well, I'm pretty sure you guys know the answer, which uh, Tyrod oh, Taylor. Yeah. We, we, we all know he might not even hit the market. So, I mean, who knows? I'm just waiting for that deadline. And if he hits the market, I it, there's not very many guys that are franchise quarterbacks that hit the market. So, without a doubt, if Tyrod Taylor hits the market, I'm throwing tons of money at him and breaking the bank for him because he can be a quarterback for the next five to seven years, and he can mentor Hackenberg as a backup. Well, you know, Justin, I actually agree with you. Um, I would actually love for Tyrod Taylor. He's actually my number one quarterback free agent that I would like for him to bring in. You know, he's a very quick, mobile athlete. He's got an arm who he can actually use to throw two deep threats, or developing three deep threats like, like Robbie Anderson. And Quincy uh, Nuno is also Smith developing. Too. Devin Smith. Oh, yeah, so let's, oh, hey, listen, God. let's hope Devin, I, let's hope De- Devin Smith comes back healthy and ready to go. Now, um, who would you actually take at number six in the draft? Well, I mean, it all depends who we – what happens in free agency, I mean, it depends if we bring back Marcus Williams or if we uh, get the chance to go for a Tyrod Taylor on the market. But, I mean, right now, guys, I'm looking at, as we mentioned, Adams, Malik Hooker I love, uh, Lattimore, as we mentioned, guys like that I would definitely take a look at. But it all depends how it shakes out in free agency of who I want to attack at number six pick. Well, yeah. well, give oh, us somebody. Ahead. Give us somebody. I'm not going to let you off like that. Give us somebody. <laughs> uh, I I go with Lattimore or Malik Hooker. I definitely love Malik Hooker. Okay, uh, fair enough. All right, that's fair. L- L- Lattimore is a good option. You know, six foot corner. He's a great ball hawk, and you know, he's a great press corner. But you know, I I could see that as an option. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but- I'll ask them a question. Well, okay, you're done. Uh, thoughts on Kevin Venter possibly saying that he would like to join the Jets? Yeah, I mean, I mean, if we move on from a guy like David Harris, that's a, definitely a guy to keep an eye on. But, I mean, if I'm going to break the bank, it's going to be for Tyrod. I don't know if I want to break the bank for a guy like Melvin Ingram I talked about earlier. I think I can definitely see your point there, Justin. You know, edge rushers don't really come that cheap, so I wouldn't really. That's why you got to find your own. Exactly. I wouldn't. I wouldn't throw all my money at Melvin Ingram. You know, because there are more holes in this roster than just a pass rusher. But um, you know, would you That's... actually? That would actually be another option with the sixth pick, or maybe even the second round, because this draft class is loaded with talent, especially at edge rushers such as um, Tim Williams. Kyle, I'll, I'll, yeah. why don't you elaborate on that? Yeah, I mean, Tim Williams is a very talented guy. Might fall to the second round due to a failed drug test. Uh, you also got a guy like Tart. God, I always murder his first name. Tart, 
Tarakis McKinley from UCLA, who can be a hands-down defensive end. He could also be a pure speed rusher at outside linebacker, very talented guy. Um, Alex Anzalone from Florida, I'm a little bit biased there, but he's a fairly good linebacker who can provide some uh, good depth at the edge position. I, I would probably consider him more of an inside linebacker in the NFL, but he could still get to the quarterback when you need to. But my point is there's a lot of talent in the first, second, third, fourth round. This draft is so loaded, and that's why I want to trade away guys like Calvin Pryor and Sheldon Richardson this year just to stockpile picks, but that's a different topic. I don't want to yell anymore. Justin, do you have any last thoughts? Because we are going to have to let you go, unfortunately. Yeah, t- Tim Williams is definitely a guy I got my eyes on. First, first round talent, but as you guys mentioned, failed drug test. So, I mean, Tim Williams in round two, I'd be all over that. I mean, that would definitely be a steal in my house. But, I mean, I I'm, I think we just got to get rid of Sheldon Richardson. Enough is enough. Off field issues, one puff away. Just see what we can get. Get a third rounder if we're lucky, fourth rounder, fifth rounder, it doesn't matter. Get him out of town and change the culture, and I just want to move on from Sheldon Richardson. Yeah, absolutely, man. I don't disagree with you. All right, why don't you give out all your social medias? Uh, my Twitter is at Justin2413. All right, man. Thanks for coming on the show. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. And now we're going to go on to our last caller of the night, and that is going to be the one and only – Tyson Roush. Tyson, long time no talk, my friend. Oh, David's got the sound bites ready. You're a mean one, Mr. <laughs> Grinch. Hey. You really are a he. Tyson, my man, what's going on? What's up, Tyson? What's up? What's up, fellas? Uh, how you doing tonight? I'm doing great, man. How you guys doing? You guys are ripping up all kinds of fire over there. <laughs> Thanks, Tyson. We you know I, I miss your rants about Todd Bowles, well, you and Joe, but um, you know it, it's been real. I got here's my question for you guys: Would you rather have Tony Jefferson or Malik Hooker? Tony Jefferson. Yeah, I, I would have to say Tony Jefferson because of the primarily NFL experience. Yeah, but how much would you pay him? Seven to eight million. I, I would pay him around that range as well. Maybe so nine million. But how many years would you go? Would you go like seven years, like thirty? You know, like I mean, like five years, thirty-five million. I mean, you have to pay him a lot of money. He's going to be highly coveted. So, are you willing to break the bank for him? Uh, I would probably give him a four-year, twenty-nine million dollar contract with some incentives in there if he makes the Pro Bowl, which I think he can. And not, I'm not denying Malik Hooker's talent, but I would prefer Tony Jefferson just because of the familiarity. And his versatility, as I've expressed before. Yeah, I actually also, agree with that. Yeah, I, I agree with that, Kyle. You know, I would actually, um, I would give him somewhere around that range because you know he is a guy with lots of depth on a roster, and um, you've actually mentioned a lot of attributes about him. And to get him for that price, I would actually probably give him something like that as well. So then, if you sign Tony Jefferson, what would you accept in a trade for Calvin Pryor? Four from. Well, I, I wouldn't want to let Calvin Pryor go. I would give him one more year just to see what he's really made of, to see if he can actually prove that he's worth a fourth-year option. But um, I would probably have to say a fourth-rounder. Really? That low? Is he yeah. that good? I mean, that's the real question. I've asked around a couple of people, you know, privately. They've, they've said fourth to fifth round if you're lucky. Fourth to fifth yeah. round? Wow, Kyle, you really don't have faith in Calvin Pryor, don't you? No, that, no that's from other people. I, I think we can get a fourth or third round, but I, I settled for a fourth in my off-season plan. Okay, now here, here's, a, here's a better question. Would you rather have Lattimore or would you go for a Logan Ryan? Oh, I'd go Lattimore. Um, you know, look, well, um, that's actually a tough choice, but... Um, I feel like Lattimore would have some attributes for Logan Ryan, but Logan Ryan would probably – I don't know if he would want a lot of money, but I would he's probably – want go, big money. Exactly. <laughs> and, plus, money. and plus, like, he's been kind of swapping on and off on New England with uh, Malcolm Butler. I would probably have to go Lattimore just because um, I think he can handle more big-bodied receivers and elite receivers than Logan Ryan could. 
Yeah, yeah. It, it's interesting, man. Cause it's, it's, it's real interesting because these guys, it's like you spend the money in free agency, it completely changes your draft. That's why all mock drafts now are a complete joke because until free Hey, agency, hey, that's hurtful to me. Hey, they're, they're a joke, dude, because you, you if, you, if you sign Tony Jefferson, your whole draft strategy, everything changes. Or, God forbid, they go quarterback or something. But, you know, it's – but, like – Ah uh, man, it's interesting. You guys, are, you guys are throwing all kinds of things out there. It's interesting, man. Like, what would be your big market? Like, what would be your primary big spending guy? Is there a guy that like, you would break the bank and pay excessively pay for? Tyron Taylor. Excessively. What? <laughs> Tyron. So you would? I can't. I so can't you break would go the... way hard. So you would go like you would go like what? Five years, eighteen million per. So you're gonna go like five years, ninety million for Tyron. Um. I, I would want it closer to like fifteen million a year. Dude, Ryan Fitzpatrick got twelve million. He's gonna get more than fifteen million. Except Tyrod Taylor is younger and he's quicker and he can actually throw a deep ball. He's gonna get at least seventeen million per, I would think. I wouldn't give him a five year deal. If it was maybe like a two, three year deal. Like I can't I don't know if it would be it would be too quick to consider him a long term quarterback in my eyes. Yeah, but what if the Browns want him? You're going to have competition for him. <laughs> here's, a, here's an easy pitch for me. Cleveland or New York? Make your choice. <laughs> yeah, that should be yeah, too hard. Yeah, yeah, Todd Bowles or Hugh Jackson? I'm thinking Hugh Jackson. Well, uh, a quarterback a quarterback guru or a clown? Who do you want to play for? Dang, David. Wow, there, there's, the, to- there's the Todd worthy. Bowles rant. <laughs> Hey, I hate Todd Bowles just as much as you, Tyson. I think that the Jets are complete idiots for keeping him and will hold the team back for the next five years. But I do think that we could definitely sell New York over Cleveland. I mean, what's Cleveland got to You got to sell winning, dude. You got to sell winning in a program. Hugh Jackson's the guy that he's building something there. What the hell is Todd Bowles building? It, how can you consider it building, though, when you get one win? Todd Bowles is too busy being a dude. zombie. Okay, but listen, who do, who do you have more respect for as a coach that has, in terms of development, Hugh Jackson or Todd Bowles? I think it's too early to say that for both. Exactly. <laughs> I, I think I've seen enough of Todd Bowles to tell you that I'd rather play for Hugh Jackson because at least they, the guys play hard every week. They're well coached. They just lack talent. We have talent. We're just not well coached. Do they lack talent? I mean, they have, they have a pretty – besides quarterback – and, you know, a couple spots on defense, like edge rusher. Yeah, they, should and beat, they should have beat the Jets this year, for Christ's sake. <laughs> I know. I want Quincy and Nunwood made a play. <laughs> oh, my God, Tyson. I, 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 you're, you're very something, all right. But who would you actually break the bank for? Uh, that's what I'm wondering, since you're asking us that. Man, you know what? I, I like Tony Jefferson, but a guy like Melvin Ingram, man, but this is the kind of player they Jets need. They they need pass rushers, and this is a deep class for pass rushers. But he's proven, and that's that's the kind of guy that I is just he? the money's gonna be ridiculous. So you who know? would you rather? Who would you is rather have? Him? With all the injuries, though, I mean, is it not a concern for you? Dude, uh, that's just talent, man. I, I would just be. I'm willing to take that risk. But see, I'm the same guy. Like, I want to get rid of. I want to get rid of Wilkerson and Richardson, and all these other clowns too, though. So I'd have cap space to spend on these guys. Well, Wilkerson, <laughs> I'm not yep, against he can that. Go. Mo can go, dude. He can go along with something. He's not wrong. They either. can both go. <laughs> okay, listen. There's a reason why we brought Mo back here, and there's a reason why we gave him that deal. In confidence. They they pan- they panicked. Yeah. They completely panicked. We did. Okay, well, one bad – honestly, I'm sorry, but one bad year does not make me want Muhammad Wilkerson to leave. Okay? So, wait a minute. He had – oh, wait, hold on. He had off the field issues for a couple of years now. He was a problem. So, it, okay. it was no secret. He got overpaid, completely overpaid, and they, he could have been, very easily been traded. They completely okay. choked. They choked and they panicked. They so, so, it's lead. comical. So, who would, you, who would you build around that defensive line? Like, would you would you want Leonard Williams to be your number one yep. defensive lineman? Why? That's it. Leonard, Leonard Williams, Deion Simon, and just Bill from on there. Dude, Lawrence Thomas, all these young guys. Dude, Leonard Williams is the kind of guy you build a team around. Hardworking, athletic, explosive, dominant. That's what you want. That That's the guy you build around. Him, Deion Simon, Lawrence Thomas, all these young guys, and move on. That was what happened? Well, we haven't seen much of Lawrence Thomas, but 
Listen, honestly, I would give Muhammad Wilkerson one more chance because honestly, he he's a New Jersey native. He's done a lot. Who cares? Yeah, and then that, what does that tell you? He's who cares? Jersey That's the whole reason you're also talking back. to the man who wants who wants to keep Calvin Pryor. So he's a New Jersey native, and he he didn't show up for his birthday party. He was hungover. He didn't give a rat's ass about the fans or anybody else. He didn't care. Yeah, I, I would give. Okay, but I, I would give him one more year just to was see. Was he really hungover? Yep. Isn't that kind of <laughs> against his religion? <laughs> the, the, all the off the field issues. He obviously didn't care. Late to meetings, late to practice, missed the mix. He didn't care. He was a Jets fan. He just looked, you know, I don't care. I got my money. I don't care. And the same problems were happening last year. So why why did they pay him? McCadden too. He panicked. He panicked with Sheldon when he should trade him at the trade deadline. McCadden's made so many mistakes. It's ridiculous. Tyson, I will find the episode of Let's Talk Jets and find <laughs> proof that a lot of Jet fans were campaigning for him to come back. Not me. Hey, Tyson, you remember me. when I used to call in on your show? I, I wanted to trade Mo pretty badly to the Cowboys. Yep. It, it made the most sense, man. It made the most sense to not give him that contract. Yep. All right, Tyson, I, how much do you know about the draft? Because that dictates how much longer we can keep you on. Not a lot, dude. Only thing I know is there's, there's I don't want a quarterback. I can tell you that much. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I don't disagree with you. Uh, well, we kind of have a project that you know we put together before the show. We're gonna do like a seven round mock draft on a simulator website, which is pretty good. Oh, God. I've been doing it for a couple years now. Would you be interested in staying around and helping us make some picks? Hell no, dude. I don't know enough about the players in the later round. You guys are going to make jokes at me. <laughs> Not me. Me neither, Kyle. So listen, hey, it's I'm okay. Sorry. I'm basically carrying David on my back right now. I think I can get you. What? <laughs> I joke, David. I joke. You, you know first-round players. That's all you need to know. Tyson, yeah. we're, we're, we're going to keep you on, man, because you haven't been on in a while, and you owe us some you owe us but some I have, but I do have, but, but I do have one question for you. Would you trade up in, right. like, the late for? Would you trade up late in the first round to pick up McCaffrey, the running back? Oh, absolutely. I, I've, I've talked about trading Sheldon Richardson in our second-round pick to get back into the first round. Now, I didn't say That's which actually, players. That just depends on who's available. I also think that would be a good trade. Honestly, I'm this close to putting like – oh, okay. You guys can't see my fingers. But I am extremely, <laughs> I am extremely close to putting Christian McCaffrey as my number one running back. He is such a brilliant runner – finding holes. He reminds me a lot of Le'Veon Bell, just standing behind the line, looking for holes. So graceful, kind of like Walter Payton or Gail Sayers, just like a ballerina when he's running with his feet. And then he can catch the ball out of the backfield. He can kick return, punt return. He can do everything you ask for him. And he's a grinder. And he's a smart kid coming out of Stanford. I think he had like a 3.7 GPA. So I know he did well there. And that's the type of player I want on my team. Now I'm not downing Leonard Fournette or Dalvin Cook, because I have all three in my top ten players overall in this year's draft, which is very rare. Yeah, no, the guy like that, man, so it's a lot of talent. Like, I don't want him, like, with the number six pick. I don't want him early, but if you trade Sheldon like you're supposed to, I'd even trade Brandon Marshall. If you get all these picks and you have the ability to move up and, and get a guy, like, late first round from McCaffrey or early second round, I'd do it. I wouldn't even care. Oh, yeah, I, I would. definitely do it. All right, Tyson, we're going to start this thing right now. We're going to start with the first round, my man. I'm going to show okay. you well, some. You, 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 you guys go do this. I don't know anything about the draft. Dude. I, I don't, you guys go do this. You Tyson, guys all we I have, anything, man. Tyson, I don't know much about the draft either. All we have to do is suffer through the first round. Okay, go ahead. All right. For, uh, after the first and second round, we'll let you go. Cause I, well, if Deshaun Kaiser is on the board, you're, uh, you're Notre Dame boy. Do we have the sound ready oh. now? Okay, whatever. Uh, <laughs> some of the players that are available with the number six pick, uh, just name a couple, Dalvin Cook, Deshaun Kaiser, Jamal Adams, Leonard Fournette, uh, Marshawn Lattimore, O.J. <laughs> Marshall and Lattimore first round, right? I think you can't go wrong there. Very good corner out of a pedigree type of school. 
My my primary choice is Jamal Adams. I'm sorry. Let's yeah, see what what's your grade. He got was available. I got an A minus for him. By the way, this grades are picks based off of like uh, availability and you so need A minus too. So yeah, so A minus for Lattimore. Type in your thoughts on possibly picking Marshawn Lattimore in the first round. I like it. Him or either either the two top safeties. I'm in for either one of those. It's just it's smart because you got to rebuild the secondary and you need talent. And if you don't have to pay for it, Agreed. Like break the bank for a Ryan or a Gilmore and these guys. I, it's just smart. It's smart drafting. Yeah. All right. Now I, I we're agree in the 100%. Round. Now we're in the second round. I'm looking at the big board right now that they have up. They have a couple of really nice players. Deshaun Watson, one of them. David Njoku, tight end for Miami. But the one that really stands out to me, running back Christian McCaffrey, no-brainer in my mind. I have him as a top-ten talent. Get him in the seventh pick overall in the second round. i got to take him. I don't even care what they give me as a grade because they don't think we need a running back to like the fifth or sixth round. And it gave me an A for him. So, Tyson, thoughts on if we got McCaffrey in the second round. How ecstatic would you be? I would be ecstatic, but who's the best pass rusher available? Is McKinley already gone? Um, I will take a look right now because I still have the big board up, even though I already selected them. T.J. Watt, uh, Ryan Anderson. Um, uh, maybe Demarcus Walker if you want to go for a defensive end. Uh, Charles Harris, but he's another defensive end. If I were to judge, my number one pass rusher would be Ryan Anderson out of Alabama because he's an outside linebacker and not a defensive end, seeing as we have an abundance right there. So probably See, that's Ryan what I would, I would Do probably, I have? A, I would probably go there. Yeah. Like I would like McCaffrey too. Even over McCaffrey. If I had, if we had like two picks, I would try to you know, get him, and then like I, pass rush is important. I mean, it's just such a need for this team for since John Abraham. I mean, they need one so badly. Oh yeah. So I'm hoping well, that the supplementary picks, like if you, if you can trade Brandon Marshall or Sheldon or whatever one of these guys, and get a second or third round pick, and then you use that to move up or something. But that's interesting. That's an interesting call right there. Yeah, well, you know, Ryan Anderson, in my mind, is like a third-round talent just based off of off-the-field issues and injury issues. So that, that's why I would stay away from him. Also, T.J. Watt available. I don't, I don't think you could go wrong with a Watt, brother. I think there's definitely a lot of talent there. All right, Tyson, thank it you is. so much. Thank you so much for going in, man. I tried to call in the Let's Talk Jets, but you guys had a moment for silence for the Jets franchise because of, yeah, you know, the, 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 the Jay Cutler talk blew up our phones. <laughs> yeah, I – I don't blame the company, honestly. They probably said, screw it. We don't want to hear this crap. Yeah, ridiculous. <laughs> Good job, guys. All right, Tyson. Thanks for calling in, my man. Wow, Tyson. Doing? IHOP was closed tonight, by the way, so. It's you're Waffle doing House. Good, you're doing, no. You're doing okay, Tyson, good, while you're here, I'm going to call you out for this. It's Waffle House. Why would IHOP, the international house of pancakes, be where David, the biggest waffler in the world, goes to serve his waffles? Because they serve waffles there, and we don't have Waffle House in, like, New York, New Jersey area. How do you not have Waffle House? It's, like, the best place to go and watch fights and eat waffles. Yeah, we don't have that here, man. Really? David, do they have a Waffle House in Staten Island? Uh, no, they don't. Nope. Oh, man, that's tragic. Wow. <laughs> do, they, do they have, like, at least Dairy Queens or Steak and Shakes? Yeah, well, of course. They're, well, they're building so a shake. Oh, steak and shake. So, well, they do have a Dairy Queen in Staten Island, 100%. Oh, okay. Well, at least, at least you're not that far off the map. All right, Tyson, why don't you go ahead and give us all your social medias because you delivered some fire here tonight, and I'm sure the people want to hear you some more. Like always. Like always. We're, uh, well, we're, 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 we're Let's Talk Jets on Tuesday night at Talk Jets Radio, and then uh, my personal one is T Rouse 21. And you guys do fun, man. It's always fun talking football, you guys. Hey, and not a problem, man. Thanks, thanks for, for joining. Us. You are the in, you are the interim champion of the Jet Take for the night. How do you like that one? <laughs> oh, I feel I feel proud. Thank you. Yeah, I know you have a thing with the interim championships over at the UCF and MMA. Oh, it's a joke. Those thing, those friggin' things. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Tyson. Thanks for coming on. Told you guys later. Ty. Calling soon. All right, and that was our good buddy Tyson Roch from Let's Talk Jets. They're a great podcast. Uh, his co-host, uh, 
Long Beach Joe calls in all the time. Don't know where he's been the past week. I guess it's David just scaring him off. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and okay. finish it. <laughs> I joke, of course. I'm sure, I'm sure Joe is busy. He is a firefighter and also he has a pretty important job. Um, we're going to continue on with this little simulated mock draft, David. We're going to go on to the third round. Once uh, no, the draft, I, the I'm today. not doing this draft anymore. Really? You're going to give up on me? Hmm? I'm not, I, I can't go later into the freaking third round, dude. I'm done. Oh, I hear a quitter. Man, to think I was going to replace you with Ben. Wow. I was so mistaken. Right, All right, ladies right and gentlemen. Seeing as All right, that is pre-puberty me. Um, <laughs> Jesus, God. Jesus, David. Why did you have to play that? Okay. Uh, I, I, no, no response. No response to that. Cause why not? All right, I can make a joke out of that. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this latest episode of the Jet Take. I know the news is scarce, and we're scraping the bottom for the past couple of weeks, just trying to get some more and more headlines like Manish Mehta. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. Our listens have not wavered at one point this whole off season even with the absence of things going on. And we thank you so much for that. As usual, you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, iTunes, uh, iHeartRadio, Google Play, SoundCloud. Just search the Jet Take. You guys are so loyal. We thank you for everything. We wouldn't be doing this without you. From me and Ben, since he's not here, I'll speak on his behalf. He thanks you because the support has just been outrageous. We love you guys so much. We're constantly getting tweets. If we miss a week, hey, where are you guys at? Where's the new episodes? Oh, we need you. We love that so much. We do this for you guys. And obviously, David's been joining us the past couple of weeks. He's got a full-time job with us now, so obviously he enjoys it also. Uh, you can follow David on Twitter, at GangreenDavid1, and then on Instagram, at GangreenDavid. And, of course, go check out his phenomenal YouTube. Just search GangreenDavid. If you're not subscribed, what are you doing? And, He's the, and by me... And- and make sure you also check out my music channel as I'm now posting DJ mixes on there. It's called David Matz. Listen to the greatest electric dance music ever, and I'll be posting more on there soon. You messed up my mojo, David. I was I was going fine there. If, if you're not subscribed to his YouTube, he's the best Jets YouTuber, you know, out there. <laughs> Thank you, I, Kyle. He, he may also be the only one, but don't tell him that. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, you can find Ben... Uh, I don't think he wants his personal Instagram out there. So you can follow his Twitter to search Ben Blessington or B.E. Blessington. I believe that's his official name. Uh, you go follow him there. And, of course, you can follow me on uh, Instagram at nyj.today, on Twitter, Kyle Fahey NFL. And you can follow my draft page at Official Draftum. I have a website up. I won't plug that because that's in the link, and I, I, I don't remember the link off the top of my head. But just thank you guys so much for all the support you're giving us on a weekly basis. You guys are just amazing. And as usual, we're going to leave you with the best chant in the NFL, if I can find it, because I'm slow. Please don't. Please don't make fun of me. I have it right here. Uh, Oh, I got it. I got it. Don't play it. Of course, we're going to leave you with the best chant in the NFL. Until next time, and actually, you're going to have Connor Rogers on the show, so you guys better tune in. Here's the best chant in the NFL. Thank you guys so much.